Yeah. Well, hello and welcome to round three of the Australian Formula Powerboat Grand Prix Championships. We are here at Rathmines at the magnificent Lake Macquarie. We're about an hour and a half north of Sydney and I tell you what, we saw day one racing yesterday but day two, the big day ahead of us and we saw some incredible stories. The field is incredibly close coming into round three and local hero Reese Coles out of Butler Vehicles currently has a very, very small points margin lead over the hard charging Sam Lucas, the young gun from Victoria, brand new in this series and we saw a whole lot developing. We didn't see a lot out of uh, some of our series contenders out of the last round, but Simon Troy came out yesterday and made an absolute statement in the hot lap qualifying. There was only seven one hundredths of a second that separated our first two, and the half a second through the blanket over the next three boats in the field. Simon Troy, as he said, he's back, cool, calm and collected, and the boat looked amazing yesterday. Sam Lucas, Lucas Marine, and uh, sorry, our Marine Jackson's Lucas Tree Services boat, he was on point. They both respectively won their first heats and did it comfortably. Shane Martin, we haven't seen Shane back in Hunter Valley Fire for a little while. He came out of the blocks absolutely looking phenomenal. And another big story developing is Dean Allison out of Allison Race Camp. He, he drove the wheels off his boat yesterday morning. Conditions here have been a little bit unsettled today. As you can see, light, light rain and a little bit of chop. So we saw perfect flat water conditions today. But shortly we're going to bring you the reverse grid, which will be race number two for the series. And later on this afternoon, we're going to go right in when all 14 boats hit the water. It wasn't all positive news yesterday, unfortunately for Paul Sain, who actually qualified in the top 10. Um, he took a tumble out of turn number four and uh, the boat rolled over. But good news from their crew. They managed to uh, rebuild, restart, and they're going to be back on the water today. Another story that was broke a few hearts up in our pit lane is young Kai Cornell out of Team 117 Motorsport. Had a big incident last time there at uh, round two down at Mulwala. Um, his crew, his mates, Kane Casson, they've been together. They have completely rebuilt this boat. And unfortunately for him, had some cracking lap times. Top four on the water. They did a prop shaft and lost a propeller to the uh, bottom of this magnificent lake. Good news, however, the dive crews went out this morning and they actually relocated the prop. But unfortunately, we're not going to see Kai Cornell race. Who's going to take it out this weekend? Well, never count out the guys from Cohen Brothers Racing. Damon Cohen, Brock Cohen, had a great run yesterday. However, they were slightly off the pace and they were somewhat surprised at that. The conditions here obviously are salt water, but we've had a real inundation of fresh water. Vision was a little bit challenging for the drivers. We've got good, strong conditions today, so we expect to see some close and fast racing. Joel Smith is back in the series, and he's a welcome return as well. Made a prop selection that he wasn't happy with yesterday's racing, so we expect to see him move forward as well. Kane Casson in the Four Tree Lawyers machine, he had dramas with trim. They've got that sorted out now, so we'll expect to see him on full noise. As I said, we've got a big field here. We've got our juniors. We've got the Formula 4s, which are operating behind me right now. 25 horsepower categories. It's a big weekend of racing. I want to give a massive shout out to the Lake Macquarie Council that have put this event on. So two weeks of incredible powerboat racing here at the lake. And of course, our series sponsors, Simmons Landscaping and Total Energy. This is round number three of the Australian Formula Powerboat Grand Prix Series coming to you thanks to the crew from Sports Film, and we hope you enjoy it. Uh, Reese, um, series leader, you've come here to round three. What are your sort of thoughts on this uh, course one? And how do you defend a lead like that? Or do you defend a lead like that? Yeah, Chris, uh, course is great. Um, you know, it's very free-flowing. A lot of passing opportunity this time. A little bit longer. I think we're into the, you know, the mid-40s. So we're probably 10 seconds that faster than the other courses we've been running this year. Going into this round, uh, points leader. I think we just need to defend, uh, finish races, gather points, and don't do anything stupid. Um, I think if we can keep doing that, maintaining, you know, high positions, uh, we've got you know, a very good chance. Uh, it's day two, two today, um, obviously you had qualifying in a heat yesterday, tell us about how your day went yesterday. Yeah, qualifying, I'm qualified third quickest, a little bit disappointed with my time, I thought I was probably a little bit, a little bit faster than what they sort of got me at, but that was what it was. What it was. Um, we ended up changing propellers for the, uh, the first race, which was a probably the end of the day a bit of a mistake we lost a little bit of rpm and uh, probably cost us you know you know pretty well second position we ended up getting third i made a mistake in the end hitting the wrong trim button uh, but look we've got we've got points uh today we'll try and gather more points and then see if we can go out for the final and um see if we can come home with a win you did that in round two too you didn't you, you worked your way up to the final and up winning it is that what you're thinking this weekend? It's a long weekend. You've got to get to that three o'clock final and get the result there. Hundred percent. You know, you've got to you've got to bank a lot of points. You've got to try and you know get in that top three for the final GP. You know, it's 15 minutes plus a lap, so it's a long race. Um, you know, we went out this morning and we tried some some new propellers. 
you know, found found the speed that we were, that we were lacking in the race yesterday. So look, you know, if everything goes good, you know, I think we're probably you know a top three contender for the weekend, and you know, a little bit of luck might go my way, and um, hopefully we can um, do well. Best of luck for that. Thank you, Chris. Uh, here with Brock and Damon Cohen. First, I'll start with you, uh, Brock. Bit of effort to get uh, here. You missed out on the last round due to the birth of a bub. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. mate, tell us a bit about that. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I had very itchy feet. I was pacing the house up and down, and it's hard not being at the track. Um, you get a bit of FOMO, but no, look, it is what it is. We're still in a good spot for the championship, and um, yeah, we're on the back foot a bit this weekend. Just um, yeah, been a bit out of it for a round. Just got to get used to things again and getting Damo's boat sorted after the accident. But um, no, we're, we're pretty happy. We've changed a few things this morning, so hopefully we can be a bit quicker than yesterday. Uh, it was with you, Damon. You're running really well. What I saw down in Marwala had a had a crash. You guys, I guess, been working really hard to get ready to this round. What have you had to do, and how's the boat running so far? Yeah, no, it's been fine. We just had to get a couple of parts for the boat out of Italy as an Italian-built boat. Uh, it was just a couple of weeks' wait on those parts. And in the meanwhile, I just revised the engine, and then uh, once those parts come together, we just reassemble the boat. We're back here. Uh, tell us about you. We're obviously away on day two today. We haven't got any footage of yesterday, but day two. How'd you run uh, on the first day? Yeah, the boat feels good. So we just we just haven't done much running in these boats in uh, such an open circuit. So uh, just our styling and our setups on the boats. But we just went out this morning and we think we made some improvements. What does it take, do you think, to get to the final and, and do really well and get the point? This is all about points this series, isn't it? What do you guys both think about how you accumulate points and get to those finals? Well, we're a little bit behind now, and I think uh, for this weekend, uh, yeah, we're just going to have to try to do the best we can. The guys at the front are extremely fast because we're going fast and they're still in front. So it's a very tight competitive pack, so we'll just try to maximise our results and play the final out. And, and you, Brock, what do you sort of think? Yeah, I just think we're just going to creep up on it. Um, the, the first two rounds were very competitive, um, especially the first one. So we had it pretty easy at the front, and you know, coming around three, and the, the bar's been raised to a whole new level. So we're going as fast as if we've ever gone all year, and you know, we're sixth and seventh in qualifying. So we've got a bit of work to do today, but I'm confident. Um, I know, I know, me and Dan probably drive a bit better on the race than what we do qualify. So I'm really looking forward to get out there this afternoon. Best luck to both. I just here with Dean Allison. Dean just saw the boat running this morning. Looked really, really quick. How have you found it? Uh, yeah, not too bad. Uh, a little bit slower today than what it was yesterday, but I think the course is a little bit longer. But um, yeah, no, boat's feeling really good. Uh, you've changed engines. You've gone from the SST to the 2.5. How have you found the differences in the boat for you? Uh, really good. Um, it's more uh, drivable, um, a little bit of extra torque and a little bit more top end, so it's, it's been really good. So. I did see a, a rumour, I've heard that you were going to maybe change boats and the boat was for sale, but the boat's run, running pretty good. What are your thoughts yeah. right at the moment with the Molga? They're good boats. Uh, they're a great boat. Um, I did fall back in love with it and decided not to sell it, so um, hopefully in the future I might get another one, but we'll see what happens. Uh, you came from ski racing, I think, or V-boat, or monoboat driving, yep. I think, from memory, didn't you? And um, I was watching you out there this morning, you're starting to get pretty confident in the boat. How have you found the transition over the last couple of years? Um, transition wasn't too bad. I just got in there and had a crack and tried to not do everything all at once, just try and gradually grow slowly, you know. So, and then we've done that and it's starting to show the pace now. And um, I just need to find that extra 10% and hopefully we get there in the end. You're working with Craig Bailey. I know he's in your in your pits. A pretty experienced guy, both on motors and driving. Has he been a help? How have you found uh, having him in, with you? Oh, unbelievable. Um, Learned like a hell of a lot. Obviously, he knows his knows his stuff and. Yeah, just, just having him around has been awesome, you know, helping with set up of the boat, um, you know, pop testing and, 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 you know, engine tuning and all that stuff. It's just, yeah, it's been awesome, it's been really good. So. First heat this morning is a reverse grid. What do you sort of think of the reverse grid and how do you attack that? Uh, it suits me today because I started on the outside because I missed qualifying, but, um, yeah, I end up in pole, so it's good. I think it gets us all in the mix and, um, you know, puts a cat amongst the pigeons, so to speak, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be good. Look forward to seeing you out there today, mate. Best of luck. Thanks, mate. Good guys. See you. Cassin, uh, Kane, you did the media day. I saw you here. It's a, sort of kind of your home circuit. How'd you go yesterday, and what what are your thoughts for today and Sunday? Um, yeah, it's a great circuit. Great to be home and having a run in a local area and supported by our own local um, sponsors and stuff. Um, yesterday, yesterday we had a few dramas with trim issues and. Um, and then also had a gearbox problem. But other than that, we're starting to get back on top of it and hopefully today we're going to be on top again. You've only kind of really just joined the circuit. You're running the unlimited engine on this boat. What are the, how are the differences? How have you found for your driving one and the setup to, uh, to run in this series as opposed to a full unlimited motor? Uh, it's quite a big difference actually. Just a lot less grunt, a lot less power. Um, I struggle a bit more out of the corner. Like it doesn't hold its head as well. But that's just something I've got to get my head around. 
uh, propellers? What, what, what did you have to do? A lot of testing, or how did you find it? Uh, a lot of our F1 props, because we're running, got a fair bit of grunt with our big motors, we can sort of spin these props with our Optis, so we sort of got lucky with that. So, yeah. And what do you think about uh, the driving and the sort of the, uh, the the competitiveness of this class? You know, it doesn't take much. The, the times are so close. How have you found that? Yeah, everyone's quite like within a second of each other. Everyone's right there on top of each other. Um, it's all with the boat setups and everyone what they're running. You got to be right on top of each other, and it just can't make a mistake. You're running a moor boat. I think it's one of the first, if the only moor boat in the uh, in the country. Very, very, very successful overseas. What are your thoughts on the boat? You've totaled the last one a few years ago, but now you've got this boat. How have you found it? Yeah, I I do miss my bubble a bit. The bubble is a good lightweight boat, and it was quite nimble. But the moor is just a way better rough water boat. Great for the series, what we're doing, and unlimited, just a way better weapon. Like, it just sits on the water and doesn't put its nose out of place. First heat this morning is a reverse grid. Will that suit you? What are your thoughts going into that first heat? Uh, it's probably not what we need to be, sinners, uh, considering we finished last yesterday, but we'll just see how we go in it and, yeah, hold on. Well, best of luck, mate. We'll see you out there, especially for the final, too. Right? Cheers, thank you. Sam Lucas. Our Marine Jackson's Lucas Tree Services, the beautiful red red cowling and dark blue sides with the blue pinstriping, the Martini Racing Colours, was the quickest man out there and took the race win. These two boats to his right hand side unfortunately did not finish, hence they have been pushed out wide. The yellow machine, it's a pew hull. He is the oldest and most experienced competitor in this field, Mr Matt Smith. And to the far right hand side, boat number 27, Paul Sane. You can see a bit of gaffer tape on that boat, as I said, he tipped this boat in and had a Massive rollover crash at over 100 miles an hour in turn number four yesterday. They've worked all night. The boat is back and the Trim King is with. We are at two flags, ladies and gents. So out on that yellow boat, you'll see the starter. He slowly lowers flags. Ignition's on. Fuel pump's on. Wait for the start. Hold your breath. Here we go. Let's go racing. Beautiful jump out of Matt Pugh. And I tell you what, Brock Cohen is away magnificently in the red machine. Shane Martin, the Optimax, not firing as quickly. He's been left in the spray, but Dean Allison, watch him go around. Hold your breath. And we are into turn number one. Allison is through clean. In the spray behind him, there's Lucas. Shane Martin is through cleanly as well, but there's a big move. Brock Cohen it is. I beg your pardon, into second. So Cohen with a cracking start. The mist hovering over here, so driver will be very, very... That would have been horrible going straight into that sun this time. Around. Let's have a look at him as they come back through now. So out in front, Dean Allison, boat number 42. But to his outside, a hard charging Brock Cohen, boat number 98. Watch them through turn number one. Allison is through. Cohen is through. Sam Lucas, gunner to gunner with Shane Martin in the Hunter Valley Fire. We have a race, ladies and gentlemen. Maddie Smith through now in the yellow and blue pew, but back to the front of the field, Dean Allison. The Allison race team doing a magnificent job. I'll tell you what, there's a boat in his spray that I didn't pick up, and that is Brock Cohen. Watch this. They are shoulder to shoulder. Hard left-hander. You see the spray lift to the inside of the boat as they trim the nose down to help them turn through this corner. And Cohen's got some speed. This is going to be tight. Cohen will get to the corner first. He'll be able to lead the lane. So Allison will have to make sure he doesn't drift wide and take him out. And he's done it, ladies and gentlemen. We have a new race leader. Brock Cohen. Cohen Brothers Racing. Simmons Landscaping. Whitley Boats has hit the front. Dean Allison now settles into his wash and the battle between Sam Lucas and Shane Martin is on. Lucas, the blue Armourine Jackson's Lucas Tree Services has just made his way to the inside of Shane Martin. So Lucas on the hunt. That boat sitting third, won yesterday's race. He's currently sitting second in the overall championship points and he needs to get to the front of the field and find Brock Cohen. Now, Paul Sane, obviously the Trim King, just come past the commentary position under pace. But as I said, that boat was upside down. Paul was in the water. He was recovered by divers yesterday. It's a miracle that he's on the water right now. But settle it down, Cohen. i tell you what, we nearly saw him blow this boat over. If they put it up too high, they will take off and we will see a boat upside down. But he is now through turn number one. Beautiful through turn number one. Allison in behind him and Lucas trying to hunt down Dean Allison now. He is closing the gap, and Shane Martin has jumped on the back of this tail. He's going nowhere. It'll take a split second of indecision, and you are going to have a boat all over in your wing mirrors. Vision in these boats is really, really challenging. We do have crews on the bank here that will be able to place radio calls to the driver to tell them that there is a boat behind them. They, however, can't give them any tips. 
They can't tell them left or right. They can just say there's a boat right next to you and carry on racing. Paul Sane now. He picks up the uh, another lap, so he's getting some points, but Brock Cohen, gee, he's fast and loose. This boat is on the ragged edge. The lead boat, boat number 98, Simmons Landscaping, Eagle Developments. Dean Allison now, boat number 43, 42, comes through the left-hander, and Sam Lucas, Armourine Jackson's Lucas Tree Services, right up on the inside of the wash. Race format today, seven minutes, I think it is, plus one lap. Eight minutes plus a lap. Thank you, John Fowler in the tower. Sam Lucas needs to get it done. Brock Cohen, I think, sitting only third in this championship series. So he needs to try and find a way. But I tell you what, Cohen has found some pace. They were scratching their heads last night. The boats are beautifully prepared. They were genuinely surprised at the pace from the front of the field. Whatever they have done, they have made massive gains because this boat on fire. We pick up the action now between Sam Lucas. You can see him sitting in the spray. Dean Allison, that beautiful grey Mulgard, boat number 42. And Lucas went to go left but changed his mind mid-corner, so he'll drop half a boat length out of that one. But looked to the inside to try and shorten the course up. Wasn't able to get it done. Matt Smith, boat number 65, that beautiful yellow and blue, sorry, yellow and blue pew hull comes through. Smithy, unfortunately, was in a great position yesterday, but the, uh, he lunched an engine, so imploded an engine with one lap to go and wasn't able to complete the race, but looking very, very solid right now. Different boats are better for different conditions. He'd love it to be a little bit rougher than this, in fact. Even though that boat's small, it loves it when it gets a little bit rough. One more time, the clock ticks down. Brock Cohen with, sorry, Damon Cohen with a commanding lead right now, but watch the action into second and third. Lucas looks to the inside of the wash, looks to the outside. So he's decided to stay outside. Will he move to the inside at turn number two and try and get the run up on Dean Ellison? He has, he's just stepped inside the wash now. What that's doing to Dean Ellison, you can see Sam changing lanes left and right. Dean will be hot in his mirrors. So it takes away a little bit of your concentration. And at the speed these boats are entering the corners, the one thing you need is 110% concentration. So Lucas now trying to pressure Dean Allison into making a mistake. It'll only take a split second, one corner wide, and Sam Lucas will be up inside him, going completely blind into that corner in the spray. So this is costing both these two time now. Have a look how close they are. So every time Lucas in the uh, chasing boat, you can see right then, beautiful camera shot, completely fills the screen with water. He has no vision when he chooses to swap sides. And you also would have noticed the nose of the boat lift as he came through the spray. Obviously channeling air as they're flying around out there under trim, but when you hit the spray, it can be enough to lift the nose of the boat and put you upside down. Matt Smith goes through now, the clock ticking down. I tell you what, Dean Allison in that grey boat, the Mulgard, is making time in the back straight. So Sam Lucas winding him into his front half, but in the back part of the course, Allison lightning fast. Brock Cohen now, the brand new father, him and his beautiful partner welcoming their first child into the world at round number two. Doing it very nicely. By this time in the race, fatigue is really starting to set in. So you've got to keep your concentration rate. Your heart rate will be up around 160 beats per minute. It's very hot inside these cockpits. Sometimes it's difficult to keep your vision because you're getting battered around inside these carbon fiber cells. It'll only take one quick moment. And you could end up like we saw with Paul Zane who looked magnificent all race and unfortunately it went wrong. Now Shane Martin in Hunter Valley Fire, this is the white boat out to the left of the track right now. He's starting to take advantage of the battle in front of him. He's got himself right up behind. These, uh, this battle pack right now. So Dean Allison leading the charge. Sam Lucas out wide. And Shane Martin now is starting to make a move towards the front of the field. As I said, it's costing these two time. And Shane Martin is taking full advantage of that. So Sam Lucas now starting to have to come under a bit of pressure from the man chasing him. So that may change the decisions he has to make out there on course. Out to the front of the field now, Damo Cohen. Looking very, very nice through that hard left-hander in front of the boat ramp and back on to the main straight. 
as he comes through. Simmons landscaping on the board for this round of the series alongside Whitley Boats. He's right, so tower time. That is one minute to go. Oh, Sam Lucas in and out of the spray. He's right up there. Next time round, we are going to see the yellow flag, which will be one lap to go. The pressure building for second, third and fourth. They know about it. Have a look at the way they're closing down on each other. Brock Cohen has this in his hands right now. He is comfortably in front. So he needs to just bring it home. But the battle pack forming for the yellow flag. So next time round, he'll be shown the yellow. That is one lap to go. Now Lucas needs to move past Dean Allison, but Dean Allison is just not letting that happen right now. Yellow flag, race leader, one lap to go. Brock Cohen, CBR race team. Sam Lucas has gone to the inside. Watch this right here, ladies and gents. If anything's gonna happen, it'll happen right now. Lucas is through, switches to the outside, but Dean Allison here is making that beautiful mole guard about 50 feet wide right now, near on impossible to get past him and he's lightning fast out of turn two. Look at the break, he's just opened up right then. So great job there. So Smithy still circulating out there with us, but a uh, little bit down on pace now. Paul Sain has unfortunately dropped out of this race. So the Trim King will not face the checkered flag. So another lap through for Matt Smith. Here's your race winner, ladies and gents, the Ripper Charge, boat number 98, Mr. Brock Cohen. Cohen Brothers race team and what a run. But keep the applause screaming for the young cunt, Dean Allison, boat number 42. What a drive, Sam Lucas. The Victorian Armourine Jackson's Lucas Tree Services home for third place, Shane Martin in the Hunter Valley Fire. Wow, that was an incredible race. Absolute hat tip to the man out in front. He found a lot of pace, so to keep that field behind him, he finished in fourth, I think, yesterday, and he's now taken out a race win. So unbelievable run. You can see these drivers all slowing down and popping canopies and acknowledging each other as Matt Smith in Smith Family Racing. Boat number 65, great to see him get home. As I said, he exploded an engine yesterday, so they've had to put their number two engine on the boat. And a little bit more work to do to get back to the front of the field. Okay, we're rolling. Right. Just here with Brock Cohen. Brock, winner of that uh, first heat today. It's a bit of work to get past, but uh, once you had that lead, just skipped out. Yeah, um, yeah, it's all about the start. And um, Dan was on the inside, and he's very quick off the dock. Uh, I had to sit pole three as well for the first few corners because I was uh, had Shane fall back a bit with the opti. But um, yeah, Dan and I had a really good run that first lap and a half, and um, yeah, it was pretty wild. But we got around, and once I got around, just um, oops, <laughs> pulled my lengths, and then just um, you just maintain the lead and. I felt something going a bit off a bit with about four laps to go, so I was praying for the checkered flag lap. And then, yeah, coming in for the um, the warm-down lap, um, the engine just stopped and got back in, the flywheel fell off, so we're pretty lucky to finish that one. You're right for the final. If it's on at this stage, we're not sure. Yeah, it's all ready to go. Um, really happy with that propeller change we made this morning. It's made a big difference. Um, yeah, P1 for the final. I wouldn't have thought that yesterday after qualifying uh, six, so uh, it's been hard work. Full credit to the team. We've worked really hard. I've had trim problems all weekend. We've got on top of that. Um, so... Yeah, I've got Simon on my outside. He's very quick off the dock as well. So, and the unique thing about the, you know, the format, I haven't actually raced Simon this weekend. So there's a few different mismatches there. Damo's up in pole four. So yeah, we're really happy the way we turn things around. Um, it's a very fast track. It's scary out there. Um, but you know, hopefully everyone just yeah, keeps it clean and we can have a good weekend. We're watching that head-on shot um, into this uh, pit turn, if you like, and it's a new perspective as people watching as to how much these boats move around. Yeah, you've got a lot of air underneath the boats. Are you settling it okay for that corner here? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Now that we're getting towards the end of the weekend, so you're getting more comfortable with your reference points and things like that, it can get a bit. There was a bit of wind this morning coming down there, so you know. Before the different engine types, so if we look at this starting grid, out of pole one we have the Optimax. Pole two is Riley Wellham. He's got the blue number on board, so that is an SST 120 two-liter Mercury racing engine. They are incredibly quick to fire. So you may well see Riley Wellham get an instant uh, burst of acceleration off the line and you might see the boat to his left hand side a little bit slow. But once they get moving, the torque of the Optimax will help catapult the uh, four tree lawyers, the white machine at a pole one. 
um, towards those two boys. Joel Smith will be quick, 2.5 litre carby. We know that about him. Builds his own engines as well. Butler Vehicles, Mr. Reese Coles, current championship leader. Remember, this is a reverse grid race. So the fastest boat from yesterday will now be pushed to the outside of the field. Why do we do that? Well, because it makes it harder for them and it makes it fairer for everybody. So you, if you come fast, you start out of one, race number two, you start out of pole number seven. So big field here. Greg Banks in the orange and white. CMS Plumbing Solutions, E-Tanks Fiberglass Octane Race Machine. Just notice his beautiful, beautiful wife down there with the waiters on, so. All right, Joel Smith crew, Joel Smith crew, the officials want you to come back about one and a half metres. Joel Smith crew, we want you back one and a half metres. All right, and the man to the outside, I mentioned him before, Mainline Dynalog, this beautiful little Mulgard hull. All right, Triple Eight can hold. Have we got Octane Racing to come out? Octane Racing, move out. Don't shout. Look at it. All right, trying to get the lineup right now. As I said, this time we've got the fastest boats in qualifying to the outside. There's a lot of pressure on these drivers. If they do move left or right, these boats will come into contact with each other. What can then happen is both boats can flip over backwards. So huge amount of pressure. And as you'll see as they take off, there's not a lot of vision. If you've got a boat in front of you and the spray's on your screen, we have a misfire from Matt Pack. Here we go, racing. So let's go, as expected. Kane Casson got a beautiful launch out of Four Tree Lawyers. So Greg Banks, unfortunately, got the, uh, the missed start there. So has to go to the rear off field, as he has done now. Let's watch him. It's going to be a lot of pressure here. Boats in four and five are through early. One's through, two's through cleanly. They are all through. So breathe out and take a breath. Now we've got a slow boat to the inside. That is Joel Smith, the yellow and silver machine. He's back underway now. Front off field though. Have a look at this. Damon, Cohen and Reese Coles. The battle is on. Cohen goes through clean to the inside. Reese Coles, the faster wide line to the outside. They drag race for the line. We saw his brother Brock make gains and I'm telling you he has as well. Hold your breath for turn number one. First time round. Coles to the outside. Cohen is through. They go round side by side. Into third, Kane Casson. So a beautiful drive off pole for Kane Casson. Four three lawyers into a solid third spot. Greg Banks making up big ground in Octane Racing on a charge to try and get to the podium. A little bit further back, Riley Wellham doing a good job. Joel Smith a little bit off pace for his expectation, but he is away clean. Back to the front of the field. Keep your eyes peeled. We've got Cohen to the inside. Coles to the outside. Butler vehicles slightly ahead. So huge amount of pressure on Damon Cohen. Here we go. Oh, we got a major. Back. Major incident behind them in the field. So we're going to have to red flag this one, ladies and gents. Red flag is flown. So two boats coming together, trying to pick up who that is out there right now. So now's probably a really good time to talk about driver safety and all the cool stuff that is on board these boats to keep our competitors and crews safe. We can see one of our drivers standing up out of the cockpit, so we know that they're okay. But... Uh, these boats are manufactured with a carbon fibre cockpit, so 5,000 newton metres of force the driver is strapped inside those cells. Five point racing harness on board, they wear Hans devices as well, like you'd see in a Formula One car in fact. A couple of subtle differences, one of them is that they have a breathing system on board, so these drivers all have a face mask, a um, little bit like a Formula One pilot that you would see, so that if the boat is upside down, until the dive crews get to them to help them get out of the boat, they can, uh, they can breathe on their own underwater. But I tell you what, that's a bit of a tragedy. So unfortunately early on in the race too. So um, it gets a little bit expensive. We can see a couple of bits floating around, but um, these boats are notoriously safe. I did say this was the Australian Championships and it gets a bit willing out there, but hey guys, we've got another race to go this afternoon. We want to make sure we've got enough boats left.
All right, so on the water too, while we're talking about safety, we do have emergency dive crews out there as well. So their job is to get out there and make sure the diver's okay. Paramedics on the water. So it's unfortunate in this sport. It's a little bit like, uh, I suppose, when you see V8 supercar back into the fence, Mr. Scott Pye. Things do go wrong, but um, that was early on. So didn't really see what happened, but I'm just trying to work out who's involved out there. I reckon that might be Riley Wellham, which is heartbreaking for, uh, for young Riley because um, they've just put that boat back together. No, just looking at the live stream, that's Mr. Kane Casson, ladies and gents. So boat number 360, the four tree lawyers. You see Casso standing out on the back of the boat, so we know that he's okay, but that's uh, that's heartbreaking for Kano. Didn't see what happened, one boat rolling over the top of the other boat completely. I said when they get beside each other, sometimes it's a bit of a draft between the two. As they bring them back to the bank. So we're going to take a little quick break. Told you it'd be exciting. <laughs> Didn't expect it to be that exciting. I'd much rather see them all finish the race. So, uh, and we'll uh, get that one. I think will be a restart. So, there's got to be a minimum amount of race uh, completed before we uh, we flag it. So, I think we'll bring those crews back to the bank once we get all the bits out of the water and uh, find all the little bits of carbon fibre and very expensive toys that are potentially sitting at the bottom of this beautiful lake Macquarie. And then we'll go racing again. Now, you can see on screen too, um, Greg Banks out of the boat. So, he's got dramas out there as well. Yeah, I think he rolled completely over the top of uh, Kane Casson. So Gunnell to Gunnell. Um, as I said, really safe. He'll be angry. They'll be both upset. Um, they're good mates out there, and no one wants to. Well, no one wants to see that happening. So, good news is, as we look at the Mercury Rescue One, there are no drivers in the uh, in the stretcher. So that means they're all happy. And uh, if you're looking at the live stream, actually, you'll notice the big yellow airbag sitting behind the cabin of these boats. So. One of the other safety features is if they do go upside down, they are travelling at a great rate of knots. There's little hatches in the back of the boat that once they sense that they are underwater, the hatches open and it floods the back of the boat. Sounds stupid, we try and sink the boat on purpose. But at the same time, right behind the uh, the cockpit of the boat, so if you look out in front of us where Simon Troy is, just behind the lid he's got opening, there's a great big yellow airbag. So what happens is that airbag inflates, the hull's open in the back of the boat, just in front of the engine, and the boat sinks engine down. So we put the engine down. Why? Because then the driver sits out of the water. So it just hangs him in the air and they just sit there thinking about how upset and expensive it's going to be to put that. Uh, Kane, bit of an incident in that race. You had to get towed in. Tell us what happened from your perspective. Yeah, Chris, it was just a bit of a racing incident. I've come into the corner and um, drifted out at the same time. Uh, Greg Banks has come in and we've just collided. It's just a racing incident, unfortunately, but that's part of racing and we'll be back out there again soon. Uh, damage to the boat? Uh, it's not too bad. It's all cosmetic. Um, you could probably need to tape it up and go out racing now, but um, we're just sorting the motor out, making sure everything's right there before we do anything. How did you find the course out there? It was, uh, it was Water seemed pretty smooth, but it was pretty close. Yeah, great course. I love it. Um, the water was perfect water. Yeah, it's fast water. Well, best of luck. I know the guys are working behind. They hopefully get you out of the water on the final. We're waiting to see what the weather does, obviously. It's been smashed here with the rain, but uh, are you any chance of getting out for the final, do you think? Uh, probably not today, no. We're just going to go over it all and just make sure everything's safe before we get it on again and get it ready for Tari if we can. Right, we'll see you then, mate. Cheers. All right. They're going to come around behind Riley now and uh, form up with him. Now, Riley's the only, only man out there that actually isn't carrying a radio, so... So the field heading around to catch the back of Riley. Hopefully uh, Riley gets the signal that he needs to slow up. So the officials working hard to try and get this sorted out. Not very common that we see rolling restart, as you can understand. Because we don't like to crash boats, but sometimes it's a little bit of fun. So the field now slowing down so that Riley can get back to them once they reform in position. We'll come around and the flag drop. We'll go racing yet again. So... Simon Troy, that's going to put him right to the back of the field again. So the Iceman, he's uh, in the white, uh, the white boat with the red canopy. 
he will actually have to start out from rear of grid again. So he made some good ground in the early part of that race, but that will all be nullified. The man in front of him, Reese Coles, both those two exceptional through that start sequence. So uh, they, that they said it'll now come down to a uh, right foot accelerator drag race as they uh, as they go racing again. So leading the field, Mr. Joel Smith in Joel Smith racing the yellow boat with a silver flash. He will come through. The start will happen right in front of us here on the bank. So in the start, finish straight. That field wants to close up relatively tight. You don't be too close. As I said, the rooster tail, if you're too close, will send you blind. What theoretically will happen is we'll see some of these boats try and dive to the inside. So one more lap around is the call from the tower. Joel Smith out of one, Damon Cohen out of two, Reese Coles out of three, four is the Iceman, Simon Troy, and five will be Riley Wellham. So just waiting for our second rescue boat to uh, get back from the boat ramp. So the, uh, one of those boats was actually partially sinking uh, on the way, so they had a little bit more time in there than anticipated. So these guys just circulating around. So burning off the fuel load. Only carry enough fuel for the distance of a race. Don't want any extra weight. As I said, the boats have to weigh in at a minimum weight by the time they get back to the dock. So use around 12 to 20 litres of fuel, depending on what type of engine you're running out there today. Tank's about 45 litres. Great shots there with our crew from Sports Film TV. And as a look out across the bay from the commentary box, there is a little bit of weather on the way. So if you haven't bought your brolly, now would be time to steal one from someone standing next to you. So we've gone to two flags. So we are now back in our start sequence, ladies and gents. So green flag is down. That means when that white flag dips and drops out there, they've all formed up nicely. So the white flag will drop. We will go racing. Joel Smith, the yellow and silver machine. So you're not allowed to come up past the motor of the boat in front of you. So you do. it is a staggered start. You're not pole position like in uh, cars. You're not side by side for obvious reasons. And we put you into turn number one and you both crash into each other. Okay, watching. Now, this is going to be interesting because that wind's just going to hit them right as they get to the bottom of this straight. You'll see a couple of little wind ripples to the far right in turn number one. I mentioned it before. Flag down. We're racing, ladies and gents. Good drop from Joel Smith, the man out in front. This bigger boat, the heavier boat. He won't mind it if things get rough. Damo Cohen, Eagle Developments, who's inside. Reese Coles is around nicely. Through goes Simon Troy. So they are four locked together. Riley Wellham is through clean. Turn number two. Smith. Now, Cohen looks to the inside now. He's had a little bit of boat pace, but Joel Smith can come over and take his line. He's got to leave. He has left him enough room. There is nothing in it. And to the outside, Reese Coles pushing hard. They're going to go three wide through four. This is high impact stuff. Get it wrong. We've just seen what happens if you get it wrong. And Cohen is through, ladies and gentlemen. So new race leader is Damon Cohen in that beautiful Eagle Developments Baba Whitley Boats Simmons Landscaping on board. Reese Coles now looks to the inside of Joel Smith. Lose him in commentary for a split second. Who will it be? So Coles to the inside, Smith to the outside, and Simon Troy pushing on hard. This is a race. The rain is coming, ladies and gents. I can see it around the corner, but through goes Cohen. Reese Coles is through. Smith is through. Simon Troy, mainline Dynalog, is through clean as well. Into the back suit. That beautiful Baba Hull, Damon Cohen at the wheel. He's found some pace this time out. So the boat looking very, very balanced. I mentioned it earlier, what these drivers do not want is sudden big wind gusts. When you're hanging this boat right on the ragged edge, you get a 20 knot gust of wind. It can tip you over. Damon Cohen right on the edge as he stands the boat up, puts the nose in the air. As he comes out of turn at number four, into five and on to the front straight yet again. 
So reduced lap count this time round. Here comes Damon Cohen, race leader. Reese Coles now in Butler Vehicles. Just sitting to the outside, looking for some clean water now. The Lexan screens on these boats will be polished to shed as much water as possible, but this slight misting rain, that'll be making it tough for drivers to, uh, to get a real good visual cue on the course in front of them. But Damon Cohen having the best of it right now because he's got clean water in front of him. Now that gap between second and third, Simon Troy, the Iceman, is now starting to push forward. It's impossible to go out there and go 110% for the whole race distance. You have to time your run, and it looks like Simon Troy is now on the charge. Reese Coles, exceptionally experienced in Butler vehicles. He won't make it easy at all. Cohen through again. Here comes Butler vehicles. The main line Dynalog Triple Eight race machine of Simon Troy. You can see changes lane, so went on the inside, moves to the outside of the wash into turn number two, ducks back to the inside again. So he is searching. Now there is a push coming now. He got a cracking run out of there. Have a look at this, through the slight left-hander. So Reese Coles, the rules are simple. You must allow a lane width. These boats are not very wide and it's a very, very narrow gap. You can't come across unless you're more than two boat lengths in front of the boat behind. Now Simon Troy switches to the outside. So he's in the left mirror, he's in the right mirror. So Reese will be looking for him. And that is mind games right now from the Iceman. But there's none better than Reese Coles at defending. I'll tell you what, the man not defending right now. This boat out in front, Mr. Damon Cohen. He's found pace from yesterday. John Cohen really happy with Brock's run earlier. And now his brother Damon out there doing it nicely. Oh, look at the moves here, Reese Coles. So Reese Coles just held his corner a little bit longer. So Simon Troy expected him to go around. He didn't. That is gamesmanship from the Butler Vehicles driver right now. Said Simon Troy has probably got a little bit of acceleration out of the corner, but that would have cost him a boat length, I reckon, that time through. So there is nothing between second and third right now. Coles is through, the man from the Hawkesbury River in the Butler's Vehicles racing team. Simon Troy, mainline Dynalog, is right up next to him. There's two boat lengths between these two guys. That is less than two tenths of a second on the good old fashioned stopwatch. Eagle developments on board, Damon Cohen alongside Whitley Boats. Riley Wellham circulating nicely to rear of field as is this man, Mr. Joel Smith. That yellow and silver Joel Smith race machine looking good out on the water right now. It is one thing to get to the back of Mr. Reese Coles, but it's certainly another thing to try and get past him. And Simon Troy doing all he can right now to find a gap. It'll only take a moment, just a split hesitation. And uh, that little mainline dialogue, the beautiful Mulgaard hub, will be right up the inside of Reese Coles. But that back half of the course, Reese seems to have uh, a better run through into this left hander. Simon making the gap up on the back part of the course, but in this front part of the straight, it's all Reese Coles' way right now. Damon Cohen through, Reese Coles through, Simon Troy through. As conditions deteriorating now, so the rain's starting to settle right in. Drivers will be 100% focused on the job at hand. This is getting tough for these guys on board. Obviously, a very small windscreen. Cape up to about 110 miles now. We've got Joel Smith shut down in the front straight, ladies and gentlemen. So Joel Smith racing. He has got a drama. He has come to a complete stop. And that is heartbreaking for young Joel Smith with 10 seconds to go before the last lap. He only probably had a lap to go. We have got yellow flag, so one lap to go. Smithy didn't get it home, but Damo Cohen. Simmons Motorsport on board. Eagle Developments, Whitley Boats. As Cohen goes through, Reese Coles. Now Simon Troy has dropped right off the back of Reese Coles and Reese Coles has pushed forward. Now he's only got one lap to get it done. I can hear Joel Smith trying to refire the beautiful Mercury 2.5 litre in front of us here. He's just got to make the line. That will get him points. Riley Wellham says, thank you very much. And takes the spot back. But that mini charge from Butler Vehicles has spurred action out of our race leader. Gee, he's done it well since this restart. Obviously, 
led from the front of the field and drove away from them. So a very, very cold and calculating run from the young gun. Put your hands together for him, ladies and gentlemen. The checkered flag fires for Mr. Damon Cohen. The Cohen brothers racing. It's a one-two punch from the men in red in our repercharge, charge, our reverse grid race. Reese Coles, Butler Vehicles, solid run from a wide pole position and that restart did a great job. Simon Troy, the Iceman, chooses to live to fight another day and brings home the Triple Eight Racing Mainline Dynalog Shire Steel entry. Proudly supported by Cobond Material Solutions and our last finisher with a bag of points for the young gun from Tari is Mr. Riley Wellham. As the rain sets in just on cue. Ladies. Uh, just here with Shane Martin. Shane, uh, great battle. Second, third and fourth. It was so close. How was it from your uh, from your side? Yeah, absolutely full on, Chris. Had my hands full. Um, yeah, the, the, the field's so close out there. You just about throw a, a blanket over everyone. Um, but yeah, the boat the boat's on song. It feels like it's performing all right. Um, yeah, we, we've got speed. We've uh, been out of the boat uh, for a few months, just like with having the bulb. So um, no, it's great to be back in it and rubbing elbows with the boys. So. And tell us about that. You, you run obviously a mole guard. The thing's quick off the dock. Um, good acceleration. You were catching. You were right there. How hard is it to pass in this uh, in this class? Um, yeah, um, like I said, Chris, the, the field is so close. Um, everyone's just on edge, doing everything they can to, to get that extra 10%, you know. Um, but, yeah, I, I think the boat's showing potential. Uh, we're doing everything we can. We're throwing some propellers at the boat, um, which we sort of haven't had the chance to play with before. Uh, we've changed a bit of setup on the boat. Um, yeah, like I said, we're, we're trying now uh, our best to keep that edge. Um, uh, in the final, we're still on a bit of a hole. We're not sure if we're going to run the final. Where do you know, you do you know your pole position? Uh, yeah, so we're starting off seventh uh, on paper. I think there's a few boats that have scratched out of the final now. Um, so I'm not, I'm not sure what the final number is, possibly 12 or something. Uh, yeah, so I think we'll be up up a little bit. Um, but, yeah, I guess if the weather holds off and we can get it knocked over, that would be great. So, yeah fall out of the epic racing machine and that's a huge improvement from him because we've seen him last time out here in the pagey and there's reese coles mate he had it right at the pointy end and went around almost backwards that, he's that's gonna he would probably get called to the tower over that one that could be a penalty carl and bailey will be he'll be sad he'll be upset there's no other words for it well done to simon the ice man troy pairing up with his good mate in the all about max machine of max cook and Roberto Bullet Talesi flying the flag for his friend Tristan Vorwerk. So there you have it, ladies and gents. Heat number two of the Andrew Page Memorial. Those uh, points will be added together from heat number one. And very shortly, we will bring you the winner of the Andrew Page Memorial for 2022. Thanks, love. All right, well, hello and welcome back here to the magnificent banks of Lake Macquarie. Um, we're here up here in northern New South Wales, just a little bit north of Sydney. And uh, we are here for round three of the Australian Formula Powerboat Club Championship Series. And what a weekend it's been. We've seen massive highs and massive lows. And right now, the weather has set in, ladies and gents. So it's, uh, there's a little bit of rain around. The water conditions are actually pretty good. And uh, we've seen some incredible racing. Over the course of the last two days, we had our hot lap qualifying sessions and uh, we had two boats that really stood out. There was only two boats to go sub 45 seconds, in fact, and that was none other than Simon, the Iceman Troy from the mainline Dynalog racing machine. The other man that uh, tipped the scales just under 45 seconds was the Victorian Raider, Mr. Sam Lucas in the Armourine Jackson's Lucas Tree Services. And those two guys put on an absolute show in race number one, both winning their respective heats. A couple of surprise packages earlier on the weekend. We talked about them in our introduction, but the Cohen boys, so the CBR race team who are always at the pointy end, were left a little bit wanting in those early sessions. So propeller selections and potentially a little bit of engine height. Um, and they went back to the drawing board today and we have seen them come out of the blocks on fire. So a repercharge round today saw the Cohen boys take the best of it. We've seen, we've seen race number one. We then went to our reverse grid for race number two. Um, Sam Lucas had a great clean run, as did a couple of others, but we have seen a couple of incidents on the water. 
and some big outs. We mentioned Kai Cordell, so doing a prop shaft and, uh, and coming unstuck yesterday. Matty Smith had some engine dramas that took him out of a race yesterday. Yeah, Joel Smith as well, we should take a minute to talk about him. He sets really high standards, obviously the big boat designed around the F1. It just hasn't been on point, so they're still searching a little bit to try and find that, that one thing. That, uh, he's got some reliability out there, but he just hasn't been able to put it together. In our last race, we unfortunately saw a big coming together between two of our uh, pretty serious hitters in Young Kane Casson in Four Tree Lawyers. So they had, you had a big moment out there with Greg Banks. Now the officials have ruled that uh, no one in particular was at fault, so they had both been penalised and were disqualified from that race. However, Kane Casson's boat um, had essentially rolled over the top of the Octane race machine, so a fair bit of damage down there. The crew working furiously in the last couple of hours. As they were disqualified out of a race, they are not omitted from the final. So if they can get that boat back together, we're going to see them back out here on the water, the Four Tree Lawyers race machine. So let's talk a little bit about what it looks like. We've seen our reverse grids. All the points have come to this. It will come down to the series win, or the, this round win, round at number three, before we go to round number four up at Moree. Out of pole number one is none other than Mr. Brock Cohen. A huge shout out to Brock and his beautiful partner. They missed round number two because they were celebrating the birth of their first child, but they have come back on absolute point right now. So boat number 98, Mr. Brock Cohen, I said, had a bit of a slow start compared to their usual high standards, and but they have come on strong. They will lead us away from pole number one. Out of pole number two is none other than Simon, the Iceman Troy. He came out of the blocks firing, was the fastest qualifier and has not really put a foot wrong. His reverse grid race, however, there was, it was a pretty untidy start across the field. There was a lot of boats going everywhere and Reese Cole's got a magnificent jump and uh, as did uh, the, um, the, the boat number 42 of Dean Allison and he just wasn't able to make that ground. Now Simon is a cool, calculating individual. He knows it's going to come down to the finals to settle his score. So, Put a good run in, pushed a little bit hard, just resigned himself that the points would put him into a good spot for the final, and he will run out of pole number two. Pole number three is Mr. Sam Lucas, the Victorian Outboard Club president. He's been a bit of a revelation this, since this season, and is currently sitting in second spot, coming into this round in the championship series. So Reese Cole's holding down spot number one, and only 40 points splitting these two. Driving the beautiful GDR, so the Lucas Tree Services are Maureen Jackson. He's got Grant Trask here with him this weekend on the cans. This team really starting to gel together. Got a lot of support from friends and family here this weekend. Um, and has had he's had some niggling issues though, so lost power steering in one of his heats. Um, they were able to fix that, but then had some dramas. Went out there, he actually shut down uh, in a practice session earlier. We thought there was a problem. It turns out there was just a, they hadn't actually pumped enough fuel into the boat for the length of session, so just had a, had a fuel outage there. But expect to see big things out of him. Um, he's had some massive highs and lows. He, he came to this series uh, last year and, and had a major incident. Has regrouped and come back with a coolness and a level-headedness um, that really has been a credit to him and the team. He is someone to consider for a top spot this weekend. Out of four, boat number 55. This is a beautiful piece of work and it's driven to absolute perfection by none other than Damon Cohen. As said, the Cohen brothers racing, they, they just didn't get it right early on. So their first race or so, they're qualifying, they were well down. So almost full second off the, uh, off the fastest qualifiers out there. Um, but have just, in typical fashion, gone back to the drawing board, put the hard yards in and came out and absolutely blitzed in, uh, in the reverse grid races out there. So Damon Cohen will now run out of four. That's the Baba hull, so it's the only one of those hulls in this, uh, in this competition. I have mentioned conditions here today, so it's raining quite heavily as we speak. However, the, uh, the crews are all satisfied that visibility is not impaired. Water conditions are next to perfect right now. We've seen a little bit of different conditions between yesterday and today, but right now conditions out there are flat. What is interesting, however, with obviously Lake Macquarie being salt water, the amount of fresh water we've got feeding in the lake right now, there's a small layer of fresh water sitting on top of the salt water. And you'll notice that when they get out there and hit the water, because uh, you're actually seeing these trails. So it's an interesting thing. We've got a great shot there for you on the live feed right now of one of our hard-working camera crews and the actual, the actual rain. It's just stepped up a notch now. So we're within five minutes of the start. You can see conditions out on course there. Or, uh, Big shout to big shout to our camera crews. They're giving us a wave out there. Uh, they're doing a pretty tough right now. So, uh, but um, the crew from Sports Film, obviously, uh, they're prepared to back us in and, and get the job done. Anyway, let's go back to our field. Reese Coles, Butler Vehicles. What can you say about this guy? There's nothing that he hasn't won. 
He's had he's had some uh, he's had some uh, really good run time this weekend, and that last race out there it really was the race cold of old. He's uh, done a great job, and he's really putting in the hard yards. And uh, I'd expect to see him push on now. Starting out of pole five, so it's going to get congested. I haven't actually got the feed from uh, the officials yet in relation to a splitter boy, um, but he's going to be one to watch. A big developing story this weekend is the boat on screen right now, boat number 42, and that is Dean Allison of Allison Racing. Um, this little mole guard is running the 2.5 litre Mercury out there. Dean Allison has been lightning quick this weekend. He's come out just with a calmness and a coolness that I haven't seen him before. And it's just translating to boat speed. Um, he's driven faultlessly all weekend and he's put himself on the podium um, and, and had a really, really clean run. So he's going to run just outside Reese Coles. Now he's going to benefit from that experience, particularly in this, uh, this dock start sequence. So he's going to have one of the best in the business just to his inside. Outside of him, welcome back to the family, Mr. Shane Martin. Shane and his wife have also uh, welcomed home their first child. So he's had a little bit of a hiatus in the Hunter Valley Fire Machine, boat number 19. But um, he's been quick, there's, there's no doubt about it. So running the, uh, the Merc Optimax, um, had a couple of glitches um, as far as throughout the race this weekend. So his wider pole of P7 probably really doesn't reflect his pace in my book. I know that the points will tell me that, but expect to see him right up alongside. Had some great battles with Dean Allison um, as well throughout the course of the weekend. Hey, Riley Wellam is back. It's, uh, it's great to see this young kid. So the man from uh, just north of, north of here, and uh, Riley Wellen, boat number 24, he's come out. He had some significant damage to the boat, so they had to come in together with, uh, with uh, one of the Cohen boys uh, a couple of rounds back. So they've had to go back and completely rebuild this boat. And uh, it's come out and it's looked really, really good. I'd love to see Riley. He's just, he's just gaining experience uh, race by race, week by week. And uh, really good to see him put a long campaign together and get the benefit from the hard work that him and all his crew have put in. Out of pole number nine will be none other than Mr. Joel Smith. So previous Formula One champion of Australia. So Joel Smith, we know this kid's capable. Um, I said he's had some dramas this weekend with getting performance out of the boat. It's a bigger boat and conditions like this probably don't suit it. Um, let's be honest, he, he would like to see it rougher. He would like to see conditions with a little bit of wind around to help him get the most out of his machine. But uh, said some real, so he had some great actual individual lap times, but over the course of the race, he hasn't been able to piece it all together. And rounding out our field is none other than Mr. Matt Smith. So uh, old man Smith, one of our most experienced campaigners in the pew. He's probably another one uh, running the 2.5 litre carby that would have benefited from maybe a little bit more chop. So um, we haven't seen that this weekend. A couple of big wind gusts through, but in, in essence, it's been a fast and flat track. So that field again, out of pole number one, Brock Cohen, Simon Troy will run from two, Sam Lucas from three, Damon Cohen run out of four, Reese Coles from five, Dean Allison will come out of six, Shane Martin from seven, Riley Wellam out of eight, Joel Smith out of nine, and Matt Smith running from ten. Big shout out to a couple of our crews that haven't been able to get through to the final. Obviously, we saw Paul Sane, um, and he's a bit of a revelation, really qualified well. So was in the top half of the qualifying field, so we had 17 boats kick off. And uh, Paul Sane was inside top 10 for qualifying and from the, from the Trim King. So this is a new team running the Aussie F1 Composites boat. So did a great job at putting it together. Unfortunately, had a big off yesterday. So actually barrel rolled the boat over. So tripped over its outside sponsor on one of our hard left-hand turners. Went in. He's fine. Um, and the team did a great job. So got the boat back together, got the engine running. But uh, we just saw him come out in that repercharge race, put in a couple of laps, uh, but then the engine broke down. Now, this is a saltwater track. He's running the Optimax, so it's probably not that unexpected. A bit of salt doesn't take much inside these uh, these wiring looms to uh, to take him out of that heat. So unfortunately, as far as I know, we uh, will not see him in the final. The other guy that we're not going to see is Kai Cornell. So that's two of our Aussie F1 composite boats. Two of our Aussie F1 composite boats that will not be in this category this weekend. So Kai Cornell, as I said, snapped the prop shaft out of the bottom of this boat. And uh, he unfortunately, well, luckily he was able to recover it. So he brought in a dive team this morning. And uh, they spent about an hour and a half uh, rummaging around out the front. And uh, they, were, uh, they were able to locate the props. So he's got the prop back. But unfortunately, we're not going to see him as we, uh, as we get out there this afternoon. Greg Banks driving the Matt. Matt Peck owned Octane Race Machine. Unfortunately, I said came big coming together with Kane Casson in the Four Tree Lawyers in our last race. So I have not got them listed in my polls positions right now. So we've uh, got a bit of action down there on pit lanes and uh, sorry, we're just waiting on confirmation as to who will be included in our final field. 
some great vision coming to you from the crew of Sports Film. This has been the Speed and Power Festival here this weekend. We saw the offshore powerboat racing last weekend at the magnificent Lake Macquarie. Um, and special thanks to the Lake Macquarie Council for all the work that they've been able to do and uh, bringing this event to all the people of the area. Unfortunately, the weather gods haven't played our way, um, but uh, we've certainly uh, had some great action at an aerobatics show too. We've seen, a, we've seen the Paul Bennett Air Show up here with us this weekend. And it's been a really big weekend for our competitors. As I said, conditions trying, the water conditions are fantastic and getting a great uh, stream or a great feed from the sports film cameras down there in pit lane. Big field of juniors here with us this weekend. We run the J1, J2 and J3 categories. And uh, be interesting to see how those times go. Obviously the handicap series and we can see some of the competitors down there now in pit lane. 25 550s has been an absolute cracking round for those teams as well with some uh, some big pushes. And I tell you what, Kelsey Dempster, the young lady from Victoria running the boat called Dictator. She has really had an unbelievable weekend. The crew, the Hancock racing team, so Brian Hancock and Kyle Hancock have done a great job in keeping her honest. Um, but I think I haven't actually gone to the judges tower, but I actually reckon Kelsey's probably done enough to take that one out. Tate Williamson from Maverick has brought the yellow flyer all the way up from the Victorian Speedboat Club to compete at this series. Got a brand new propeller in from Europe and it has lit this boat on fire. I've never seen that young kid smile. I think he's about 17 years old now and uh, his father, Glenn, and they're just really proud and he's done a great job this weekend. Got himself to the podium and uh, actually I think beat his cousin home with Kelsey Dempster in one of those races. So he'll be pretty, pretty proud of that as well. So great run out of the 25-550. Good shots at a big wave from the crew at the Raven Terrace Aquatic Club on board their rescue vessel from down there in pit lane. As you can see, conditions really tough and uh, we can't thank our volunteers enough for the work that they've put in. A couple of times up here in the tower with our timing crew, the uh, the, the Fowler family. We've actually had to evacuate the tower because we've been under six or seven inches of water. But the show will go on. So just waiting on the final ruling on eligibility for the final. Couple of boats down there. We can see Shane Martin, the Hunter Valley Fire Racing Boat, number 19. That beautifully presented Optimax registration SST 120 from back in the days when that hull ran the 120. But he's put the Optimax on and it's really lit this boat up. So the Molgard, Shane, really quite unassuming as a driver, right out until, sorry, as a, as a guy that you want to meet and, and get to know, hell of a nice bloke, but put him on the water and he becomes an incredibly fierce competitor. So, Brock Cohen, Simon Troy, Sam Lucas, Damon Cohen, Reese Coles, Dean Allison, I tell you what, the, the, we've got the best assembly of drivers for this category that you're going to see absolutely anywhere. I'll just try and get confirmation for our final is a 15, 14 minute race, so 14 minutes plus a lap. No right hander, or no no specific right hander in this particular track, so turn one as we just take you through. So start, finish straight, the uh, Mercury start, finish straight, and then into turn number one. So just under 90 degree left hander, and that takes you out to turn number two, which again is about a 75 degree left hander, and then it takes you into a sweeping arc down the Simmons landscaping back straight. Past turn, uh, past turn boys number three, our star boy, and into turn number five. So turn number five is where most of the action's been, in fact. So Paul Sain tripping over. Um, it's a hard left-hand turn that takes you into a short straight back towards the boat ramp that is on screen right now. So a uh, bit of action out there at that turn boy, and it's obviously at the end of the big long back straight, so boats are closing at big speeds, and anyone that's got an advantage is trying to force the point. So that's where the arguments have been. Haven't seen too much in the way of uh, dramas anywhere else throughout this course. You then come through the uh, back straight into our last corner. So total energy into the uh, no turn number six. Now this is a more than 90 degree corner. So you really got to bury the nose of the boat and turn it in hard and bring it back around into this front straight. Now, as I said, no specific right hander, but you'll see just behind in our shot, there's a, uh, a big red boy out there in the water. Just behind that to the right hand side is a swimming dock. So the boats don't have a specific right hander, but it is a bit of a sweeper. So they can't come too wide towards the beach out of turn number six. They've got to keep it pretty tight. Otherwise they can't straight line back down the, Mo the Mercury main straight through for turn number one. Lap times here are around 45 seconds. So in, in race trim, maybe 46 and a half seconds in race trim. Qualifying the best times we saw were the 44.93, I think it was. Only seven one hundredths of a second between Simon Troy and Sam Lucas, so absolutely nothing in it. 
to set about half a second between the next two boats and within a second almost the whole field so uh, boats are starting to hit the water now boat number 42 the grey machine stealth mode grey on a day like today great for the commentary box up here i can assure you but the bright 42 that's dean allison complete revelation so the cow of the ssd 120 but i can tell you underneath that cowl is the 2.5 litre mercury carby Engines run strong all weekend and the boat has sounded a million bucks. Shane Martin on screen, boat number nine, Hunter Valley Fire. He's running the 200 XS Optimax, so he's gonna be one to watch as we go through. Now Shane Martin has set out a pole seven, so just have a look at it. We've got Brock Cohen in the carby, so 2.5 litre. Simon Troy also running the carby, so Sam Lucas, the first of our Optimax competitors, will run out of three. Damon Cohen is uh, Damon Cohen is actually running the 2.5 litre as well. Reese Coles, Dean Allison is out there in the 2.5 litre carby. So Shane Martin with the Optimax as well. Riley Wellham running the SST 120. Joel Smith 2.5 carby and Matt Smith the 2.5 carby. So Sam Lucas, obviously we've talked about this before. The 2.5 carby or the benefit thereof of the 2.5 carby being that it will fire the ignition system immediately. So we have seen that translate at the dock starts to being a slight advantage over the Optimax boat. So the Optimax, the high pressure direct injection system requiring about half to three quarters of a revolution of a flywheel before the ignition system or the ignition module, sorry, it needs to build fuel and air pressure before the ignition module will turn on and fire a spark plug. So it takes that split second of engine cranking before the engine will launch. Now we do see that translate on the starting dock to around let's say half a boat length at times. If everyone gets away even, it's half a boat length. However, the torque of the Optimax then comes into play. So what we tend to see, the Optimax boat getting away slightly disadvantaged just behind these carby boats, and then the Optimax starting to make ground. The effect on the starting dock means concertinaing. So we do have, we have seen quite a bit where if someone gets even a split second late off the start dock, they're now sitting in the wash of six or seven boats. This time round, we've got 10. So you've got to make sure you get that start nailed. One to watch on the starting dock will be Riley Wellham, obviously running the SST120. And uh, those boat, that boat's super light, super fast, and it gets away very, very quickly. So if Riley can get to the front early, he's running out of pole eight, he's gonna make life difficult for Joel Smith and Matt Smith. They're gonna have to stay wide and get around him. On screen now, boat number 88, Simon Troy, the Iceman. Cobond Material Solutions, Mainline Dynalog, and Shire Steel on board as his major partners. He's going to be one that's be very, very tough to do. We know that about him. He's relentless in his pursuit. If you're, uh, if he's chasing you, and if he's the man in front, he makes that boat about 45 feet wide. But his task will be to try and get up and around Brock Cohen. Boat speed for boat speed. There's really nothing between it. It's going to come down to how they get off the dock and how they get through turn number one. Now turn number one from the start dock is more than 90 degrees, so very, very tight on the inside pole. If you're out wider, you can let it run a little bit wider depending on where your position. Now the officials were quite clear at the briefing that they will be managing the turn or they'll be administering the rules through an arc of more than 90 degrees. So almost, to, let's say 120 degrees. So you have to get in and out of the pole position and any impedance will be dealt with with a one lap penalty as a minimum. So it's really important that we see all these boats get through and not change lanes on the way out there. Easier said than done uh, when you're going from zero to 120 mile an hour across this uh, this short straight and then turning left. Once you get the boat through that corner, you've got to stand it up for probably a split second and then start to settle it down and try and find a line through the, the left-hand turn and into the total energy back shoot straight at the Catalina boat ramps. An amazing facility here, up here on this beautiful lake. So a triple boat ramp down there for all the crews. We've had the uh, carnival and the, the festival on the beach uh, here this weekend. Air shows, you name it. It's been absolutely phenomenal. So massive thank you to Lake Macquarie Council for inviting us here this weekend. And uh, I believe it's actually a three year deal. So you're gonna see us back bigger and better here next year. Riley Wellham on screen right now. The kid from Taree. Had to rebuild this boat after an incident and uh, he's been very, very good this weekend. In the early stages of his career developing as far as the, uh, in this, in this uh, category. But um, I tell you what, he's more than just a, uh, he's more than just a number out there, Riley. He's, um, he's been really quick on and off this weekend. I just love the way he's driving this boat as well. 
the Thrady Graw of the SST120 as Riley brings it here into the starting dock. Simon Troy on screen, number 88. Had a good yak with Steve Troy, so the crew chief of this team. And uh, mate said they, they, they were down on pace, let's face it, in round number two. They really couldn't get to the front of the field. They came out of the box here and absolutely brained it. So uh, Steve, pretty quiet guy, won't give a lot away, but he just gave me a quiet smile and said, yep, Murph, we've, uh, we've made some changes. And uh, I know they've got the same driver, I know they've got the same boat, so I'm not sure what the engine whisperer has done, but he's certainly paying dividends for them here this weekend. First two rounds have been on freshwater in some of the big lakes down on the uh, Victoria, New South Wales border at Lake Hume and also at Lake Mulwala. Now this is our first saltwater round. Now that is quite a difference for some of our crews as uh, Grant Trask makes his way past me in the commentary box. We've got our Marine Jackson's Lucas Tree Services on screen right now. So the boys are back. Had a couple of niggles this time round. I'm looking at Grant to see if he's going to give me any kind of indicator, but he's a pretty sharp player. He looks pretty happy. Yeah, he's given me nothing. Never play poker with Grant Trask. Guaranteed to go badly for you. So our Marine Jackson's this beautifully presented boat, Lucas Tree Services. This is a partnership between Stuart Jackson and Sam Lucas. They now have two of these magnificent GDRs in the fleet. Uh, one running here with us this weekend, and next weekend they'll pick up the other boat from Race Marine headquarters in Victoria and head across to Adelaide to compete in the unlimited outboard category. So the 200XS Optimax on board this one and a fire breathing, I think it's a 280 um, power head that's being bolted on down there at Race Marine. So big shout out to my mate Simon and the crew, Bisho and all you blokes. I'm sure you've tuned in to Sports Film to check out the action. Last few boats getting into the water right now. So we're within the next five minutes. We are going racing for the final. V number three, and I tell you what, it's anyone's race. I can't pick it right now. I, you know, history will tell me that uh, Brock Cohen, he's got the form this season, but he, he didn't at the start of this weekend. Simon Troy, mate, I'd never back against this man. Sam Lucas, uh, good mate of mine as well, but uh, I tell you what, just being ruthless, he's right up there. Um, he's, it's anyone's game. Any of those first five, six boats, Dean Allison, don't count him out. We will have to wait and see. Good opportunity to take a moment to thank all of uh, our volunteers and it's been a tough weekend for the crews, particularly out on the water. It's been cold, it's been wet and they uh, have done it all with a smile. Down in pit lane, so Pagey, Granny, Liz, the Parker family and there's hundreds of you. Um, up here in the, commentary in the commentary box, the race control, the Fowler crew and of course Gavin Simmons. Our senior official, Ron Beasley, there's 600 Beasleys here with us this weekend as well. So it takes a lot of people to get this show on the road. And we wholeheartedly thank you for uh, for bringing the big show to town. Big shout out to uh, Marty Kimonello as well. He's uh, he's down there, tad to tow our official our official uh, vehicle with all the gear up here. This weekend. Pete Massena working with him down on the way station. So 2.5 litre Carby, 200 XS Optic Max, and of course the SST 120s. SST 120 boat and driver must weigh minimum 500 kilos when they come back to the ramp. The 2.5 litre Carbies and the Optimax penalise 50 kilos, so they must weigh minimum of 550. So at the completion of the race. So the top four boats will be weighed and tech inspected, so involving pulling down and engine measuring. And the remainder of the field stays in park for May. The Formula GP series has been a real revelation for our sport and this is the number one show in town for Formula Tunnel Boats. <coughs> All right, so just had word through from the pit control that Joel Smith, boat number 66, is out. Right, so that'll be a bit of heartbreak for the Smith family racing team because um, he showed a lot of promise. He said he has had some niggles and uh, had it shut down in the last race. But, um, mate, that's a bit of heartbreak for Joel. He's a hell of a character around and works really hard, not only his own boat, but for other teams as well. So, unfortunately, it looks like we're not going to see Joel Smith come out and greet the starter. Simon Troy now to the start dock here and on screen, the beautiful Baba boat number 55, Damon Cohen unmistakable nose of that boat as it looks angry while it's sitting still. It was lightning quick at round number two, but unfortunately uh, had a bit of an incident in, uh, I think it was the last corner of the last lap, trying for a 
trying for a last minute charge, didn't pay off and uh, some damage was sustained, they've done a lot of work. Not a lot of internal damage to the boat, so just more the top sides talking to Brock at the start of this weekend. So structurally the hull was fine, but some damage around the top of the boat because the boat went over. Interesting fact, Damon Cohen has a two metre arm span. I don't know how I know that, but he does. He told me about it, two metres from fingertip to fingertip, and I reckon that's big. Not sure it helps him in a tunnel boat, but it's just an interesting fact we thought we'd throw out there. Tell you what, the uh, the atmosphere has just changed here. So the radio crew is now making their way to the tower and things starting to quieten down a little bit out there. So a little bit of apprehension. This is going to go wild, ladies and gents. So glad that you've uh, you've braved the storm and you've you've weathered the storm, I should say, and you've joined us down here on the banks of the lake because uh, this is anyone's race. Points allocated for this weekend are on your finishing positions in the final, so it comes down to this. It doesn't matter how fast you were in qualifying, it doesn't matter what race you won before this, it will come down to who comes first on the podium to take home the race win and the round win for round number three. Reese Coles comes into this series about 50 points ahead of Sam Lucas in Armourine Jackson's. Right behind him is one of the Cohen crew. And to put that in respect, remember that uh, Brock Cohen actually had to step out of the boat and uh, Will Parker stepped in to race the boat for him. But this is a driver's championship. So although the boat campaigned and was quite successful in round number two, the points don't count. So Brock Cohen probably a little bit further up the leaderboard, but here we go. This is our siding lap. So this is a slow motion version of what it's gonna look like. How many minutes was it? 14 minutes plus a, lap, plus a lap. Big shout out to Matty Fowler, New South Wales Secretary, sitting next to me, feeding me all the information that I forget regularly. Thanks to all the Fowler crew, John and Beck, running the official timing here under a lot of pressure with the rain has set ankle deep in water a couple of times. But somehow we have gotten to this point, ladies and gents, because this is round number three. This is the final. This is the big one. We've got nine boats left. We started with 17. We have nine boats left for this final. The mist hanging just out there so uh, condi the water conditions is unbelievable I'm looking next to me Chris Kuznetsov of sports film a highly accomplished powerboat racer this is good water boat number 14 butler vehicles Reese Coles he's the first through to have a look Shane Martin goes through Sam Lucas has a look at turn number one for the last time in practice Matt Smith, our most experienced campaigner out there in the beautiful yellow and blue pew hull. Simon Troy, the white boat with the red canopy, just stretching the legs down the back chute. Riley Wellham out there and Dean Allison from Allison Racing Team. This is a quality field, ladies and gents. You're not going to see anywhere better than this here with us this weekend. Big shout out to Sports Film and thank you for bringing this incredible footage to us. If you want to uh, get online and have a look or your friends aren't here, quick, throw them a quick text. Get on to Sports Film TV. The link is there and you can jump onto the Sports Film YouTube page and watch this event live. The event hosted by the Australian Formula Powerboat Club. Round number three. Round number four will be in Taree in a few short weeks' time. Sorry, in Moree in a few short weeks' time. So just being confirmed. And conditions settling off absolutely beautifully. That rain holding off. Fourteen minutes plus a lap. Forty-five seconds average lap time. This is going to get very busy. We have not seen nine boats out there at one time this weekend. The start will be a pressure cooker. The risk reward is massive through turn number one. Now we have no splitter boy in play that I can see out on the course. So all boats will run a beeline straight for the splitter, the, the left hander. Pole one, Brock Cohen. Pole two, Simon Troy. Three is Lucas. Damon Cohen out of four. Reese Coles in five. Dean Allison 
in six. Shane Martin in seven. Geez, Reese Coles, he's got the bit between the teeth. Riley Wellam out of seven and Matt Smith. Sorry, Shane Martin out of seven. Riley Wellam out of eight and Matt Smith out of nine. So magnificent feed here from the starting dock. You can see by the beanies, you can see by the rain jack, it's been cold. But that will not matter to the crews right now. Shane Martin's wife's Tamara, isn't it? Yeah. The beautiful Tamara Martin, she's only had a baby a little while ago. She's down there in our waiters turning around her other half, Shane Martin in Hunter Valley Fire. That's love and commitment right there. So big field up if you're watching us on the live stream. The boat to the uh, top of your screen. Boat number 98. That is our pole sitter. So that's pole number one, Mr. Brock Cohen. So as we turn the field around. Start lap will be straight across. Hard left hand turn at the double yellows. Into the back straight for the first time. Or sorry, into the, uh, into the boat ramp straight for the first time. Then the hard left hander down the front chute into turn number one. Start procedure is two flags, so all eyes on the start boat. When we get these boats lined up and pointing in the right direction, the yellow boat right out next to the chequered flag, right in the middle of the course, you will see our starter. One of our Tasmanian officials has come up to support this weekend. They will hoist, hoist two flags in the air, slowly lowering one flag. That means we are in start sequence, ladies and gents. Slowly lower that first flag. The ignition systems are on. Fuel pumps are on. Finger sitting poised over the start button. The moment that second flag is dropped, we hit the button and bang, we are gone. Now remember, watch out for the Optimax. So that slight disadvantage on the starting dock, but the mid-range torque. We expect to see Brock Cohen out of one get a decent jump. San Lucas has been quick off the dock, but Simon Troy, Damien Cohen, this is anyone's race. Mate, we're within 30 seconds right now. They're just getting the last of these boats lined up. So silence descending across the crowd here. If you're down here with us on the bank, you can see there's only about a metre and a half, two metres between these boats, and they're going to hit zero to about 100 miles an hour before they turn left out there. So 160 k's an hour. This is as good as it gets in Formula Powerboat Racing. We are at two flags, ladies and gentlemen. One flag will lower. You can hear the ignition systems turning on. There's dead silence here. Let's go racing. Flag drops, we've gone. Let's see him go. Beautiful start from the Iceman, Simon Troy, out of pole two. He's got a great run. There's a little, it's compacting a little bit to the outside. So Sam Lucas has gone nowhere. That is a tragedy, but back to the front of the field. Who have we got? Simon Troy, no, Damon Cohen. So it's Damon Cohen. No, Brock Cohen has got the inside run. And where has Simon Troy gone? He's sitting in the spray just behind him. So Brock Cohen out of one, Simon Troy out of two, Damon Cohen out of three. He's been pushed hard to the outside by looks like Reese Coles in the spray. They go behind the, uh, the bank for the commentary box. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But Sam Lucas dropped 10 seconds on the starting dock. It is Brock Cohen, ladies and gents, lead them into turn one. Simon Troy, Damon Cohen, Reese Coles, Dean Allison in a four spot cracking run. Shane Martin in Hunter Valley Fire. Matt Smith is put up there. There's Riley Wellham and Sam Lucas, Armourine Jackson, as I said, left behind at the starting dock. He will have to fight his way right to the podium if he wants to grab a bag of points in this one. But look at the pace in the boat out in front. This is the Whitley Boats CBR Racing Machine, Eagle Auto Developments, and it's Brock Cohen. He is showing a clean set of heels. He is absolutely on it right now. This is a cracking pace for lap number one. For the first full lap, he is flying right now. Simmons Landscaping, boat number 98, Simon Troy, Mainline Dynalog, Shire Steel, Cobon Material Solutions, Damon Cohen in the Baba into third spot, but Reese Coles in Butler Vehicles is sitting just to his outside. Oh, gee, they're close right then. 
I'll tell you what, who was that? That was uh, vote number 42. So Dean Allison and Shane Martin. I didn't actually pick up what happened, but fourth and fifth, there was a massive moment there where it looked like Dean Allison had to take evasive action and get around him. So back to the head of our field. So some magnificent shots there from Sports Film as Cohen just drifts the boat through. Here comes Simon Troy, the beautiful Mulgaard out of Sweden. He's through. The babber of Damon Cohen goes through. There is Reese Coles. Front straight on screen, boat number 98. Leading this field is Damon Cohen and he's got a good break on Simon Troy. There is no doubt about it. A bit of ground to make up and he is driving away for them. Now Sam Lucas, he has picked up two spots. So he is on the hard charge. So keep your eye on the R Marine Jackson's racing team. Entry that beautiful GTR because he needs to get the job done. Grant Trask will be on the cans assignment to, uh, to Sam, just telling him to stay calm. This is a long race, 14 minutes plus a lap, ladies and gents. Once more, down through turn number six. Let's have a look at boat number two on screen. There's our race leader on screen. Coming through just behind him now, that is boat number two. So Simon Troy, the 88 machine in mainline Dynalogue. Fastest qualifier this weekend, but I tell you what, Brock Cohen has the drop on him. About five seconds back now is Damon Cohen. Sam Lucas now ranges up on the outside into turn number one. This is going to be pressure. Shane Martin on his inside. Lucas to the outside. They are through cleanly. But Martin is not going to give it up that easy. Pushes back to the inside, but Lucas is through. So that is one more spot. He is now up into fourth spot. Sorry, fifth place. No, he's not. I forgot about Dean Allison. He's up into sixth place. Right, back to our third and fourth on screen. So that is Damon Cohen now. In the Baba, Reese Coles, Butler Vehicles just sitting to his outside. The Baba just skirting in beautifully, goes in tight in turn at number six. The Eagle Development Simmons Landscaping Machine. An absolute rocket ship right now, but a bit of ground to make up. And he's probably made one or two boat lengths on Reese Coles in Butler Vehicles through that last set of turners. You can see Butler Vehicles now coming into the rear of your shot. Out in front though, looking solid. That is of course Brock Cohen, boat number 98. Doing a beautiful job. Matty, sorry, Matty Peck, Matty Peck. Matt Smith, I should say, apologies, Smithy, going through looking very, very nice in that beautiful pew hull. A lot of experience behind the wheel as he gets the job done into the back straight. Riley Wellham. Doing a solid job now. The SST120, the smallest cubic capacity engine in this field. And he's down the back straight. The boat's sitting perfectly balanced. So great racecraft from that young gun. All right, time to take a bit of a breath and have a look. It's going one out of one right now. Brock Cohen, two. Simon Troy, third is Damon Cohen. Fourth is Reese Coles. Now fifth is Dean Allison, but I tell you what, just pick up that grey boat out of turn two. Beautiful shots there from Sportsfield because Sam Lucas right now is on the charge. He is trying to wind in Dean Allison now. Nothing between them in the back straight. The Armourine Jackson's machine making a move. You can see him in the spray. So have a look to the left now as they charge hard at the boat dock. The acceleration of the Optimax is just, they are gunnel to gunnel now. Allison to the inside, Lucas to the outside. They disappear around the corner. Oh, we've got an incident. So, oh, Sam Lucas, Armourine Jackson, boat underway, rolled over. Dean Allison, unfortunately. <laughs> Dean Allison, unfortunately, uh, upside down in that corner. <laughs> All right, so that was big. The pressure is coming hard. There he is. So good work right there from Dino Allison. So you can see him there. So he's uh, popped the helmet out. Well, we can all breathe out. That was a tragedy. This is the number one show in town, ladies and gents. And unfortunately, it, uh, it's gone terribly for Dino Allison. He's been faultless all weekend. So coming together with Sam Lucas down there at... Uh, um, we're not live, are we? Oh. 
So rescue crews on site right now and mate he's drifting away from the boat so big wave from him so he's safe and sound. These boats are incredibly safe so it's probably a good time to remind the crowd the uh, boats are fitted with a carbon fibre cockpit cell. Five point harness on board and of course an air breathing system so although Dino was upside down for a little while he does have his own mask and breathing apparatus on board so he can comfortably sit upside down. It's actually part of the training to hold an APBA licence and just looking at the on-screen replay from sports film, well, uh, look, I'm, uh, I'm not going to call it because I'm just in the commentary box, but Lucas to the outside, good, decent overlap, turned in tight and hard, and it looks like uh, Dino wasn't able to maintain the same lane, so drifting out a little bit wider, and the boat has tipped up on its side, rolled right over the top of Sam Lucas in our Marine Jacksons, and, uh, mate, Sam won't want to see that either. He's a racer, and um, he wants to get out there and race, but uh, good news right now is we just... Uh, a little bit of a step early from uh, Lucas on the way in, but got the boat under control. Lane given there now, and uh, so we've got some fantastic footage here on screen, but you can see just so unlucky. There's half a metre in it, it to be anything, and uh, as the boats came together, the um, Armourine Jackson's boat turned hard left when the contact was made. So uh, pretty much forcing his boat underneath Dean's boat and rolling him over the top. But uh, so divers in the water up there, but it uh, looks to me I can see uh, see Dean Allison on screen. So big shout out to all his crew, they'll be heartbroken. So uh, being lifted into our medic boat out there right now. If you are watching uh, online or so if you're checking out the sports film page, it's actually a requirement of the APBA that uh, even if you end up in the water, even if you're unhurt, that you uh, do hop into the basket and uh, you do the best you can to lay still and uh, let the medics take control. Dean's not doing a very good job of that right now. He's trying to climb into the boat himself, but uh, yeah, he'll be heartbroken at that. Um, it's uh, unfortunate, but I uh, see, we got some emergency divers out there, but what a race that was developing into. We'll, uh, we might go back and see if we can pick up some early footage of the race start. So Brock Cohen got a cracking start, and uh, Simon, Simon Troy was away beautifully as well. But I uh, tell you what, Sam Lucas, um, we got Grant, Grant Trask has obviously now gone down here, but just got left at the start line completely. Um, the Optimax system, it sounded like he needed to shut down and re and turn the ignition, fire the ignition back up. Lost 10 seconds off the start. Yeah, so Dean Allison standing up under his own steam and uh, he's perfectly okay down there. He won't, he won't be happy, of course, but um, he's back on board with our medical crew. Big shout out to our medical crews and our, our course boat crews. It's been a tough weekend for them. To uh, the crew and skipper on board that boat are actually from Tassie, so flying all the way up here. So let's go to a replay now of the starting dock lineup and tell you what, out of out of number two and two and three, see Sam Lucas getting left behind, but Damo Cohen got a beautiful start. Dean Allison in boat number 42, that grey machine, he launched off the start. Tell you what, in retrospect, there's probably a little bit of contact in the early part just outside Allison. So Shane Martin potentially getting pinched between Riley Wellham and Dean Allison. So you see the inside of the sponsor lifting. So. Could have been spray, but it looked like there might have been a bit of uh, bit of sponsor and sponsor and action in, uh, out of poles six, seven, and eight. But uh, some incredible footage there. Tell you what, I'm glad I'm not uh, on the race committee with that one. I said Sam uh, coming around the outside, the pace was there, but um, just Dino you know, not able to maintain the same radius of corner. It looked like to me, and came into contact with the uh, just the back quarter of Sam's boat, which turned the boat towards him. In fact, so it actually made things worse. And then Dean's boat uh, riding up on the side of Sam's boat, tripping over the top. Drivers obviously wearing uh, Hans devices on board. So one more time on the replay. So Allison to the inside, Luke's to the outside. You can see the corner is made there. And Allison desperately trying to stay inside Lucas. Just terribly unlucky. There was nothing in that. Those boats could have clunked a hundred times and not had that happen. But just hit at the wrong moment when the back of Sam's boat was probably a little bit light and it turned the boat left marginally and uh, rolled the boat over and under. So, uh, mate, Dino will be heartbroken and, and rightfully so. He's, he's been quick all weekend, didn't uh, deserve to come back in the rescue boat. But uh, fingers crossed the boat's in pretty good shape and uh, he can get himself back together for the Moree round. So the battle between Damon Coles and Reese one was also, and Reese, sorry, Damon Cohen and Reese Coles was also developing into a really interesting one. Not a lot in boat speed, and we often see that early on. You've got that initial charge out of the start dock, the adrenaline's high, the heart rate's up, then you've got to settle into a bit of a routine. So 14 minute race, so it's a long race. You've got to get your heart rate back down under control and maintain your focus. 
because that is critical out there. One moment, uh, one moment, and you get a mishap, and uh, yeah, it was one of those, one of those things, unfortunately. But yeah, Sam, and uh, you can see Sam on the right-hand side on shot right now, talking to uh, talking to Dean Allison. So they're uh, they they both be heartbroken. It's taken uh, two of these serious competitors out. So going back to our replay of our start, so to the left of screen, it said Simon Troy looked like he got the far better of the early start, but then the back half. Brock Cohen was able to really get the power out of the water and you can see him rounding that corner then. Came out with probably four or five boat lengths so really translated to uh, some excellent drive out of the back part of that start and put him in a solid position. He said Lucas being left behind at the dock so that would have given Simon Troy a little bit of room. Probably expected, he may not have known that because there's a lot happening at the start line so left alone potentially went a little bit wider, could have pinched in a little bit on him but uh, Damo Cohen doing a good job um, up against Reese Coles. So we'll wait from word for the start. Obviously early on in that race, I'm assuming we will go to a rolling restart. But uh, right now our crew is just sitting out there on the water. System of flags in play, which alerts the uh, drivers to an incident on the water. We can see on screen now the recovery of the boat is still underway. Boat picking up part of the Armourine Jackson's machine and uh, the boat number 42 under tow. So sitting pretty low in the water. Out the back there, as I said, these very, very safe boats. A carbon fibre cockpit, they have an airbag behind the driver's head that uh, as the back of the boat takes on water and uh, the couple of valves that open when the boat turns upside down. So it deliberately sinks the back of the boat and lets the nose of the boat rise in the air. The airbag will then uh, inflate and that uh, helps to hold the driver up out of the water. So in the case of that boat being completely inverted, as we saw with... Um, with boat number 42 of Dino. With a little bit more time, the boat would swing down, so the engine weight would pull the boat down and the boat would sort of potentially almost semi-right itself. And the cockpit of that boat would be almost completely out of the water. So you never want to see that. Um, it's said we love hard racing, but you don't want to see someone's pride and joy getting towed back to the boat ramp. So fingers crossed there's not too much structural damage on board that boat. Uh, looking like it's down a little bit in the right spots and so we potentially got a, and that's the side that made contact. So it does have two divers hanging off it as well though. So that potentially yeah, might be making an inch. Yeah. Bit of a busy weekend for the uh, Tari Aquatic Club rescue team, unfortunately. So not the first boat they've had to tow back in a couple of bits. So once we get that uh, clear of the boat ramp, the uh, flag will be shown to these crews that will bring them back to the bank. And then we're going to look at a rolling restart, I think will be the call. But we'll have to wait for that from the tower. So eight minutes gone in the 14 minute race. Button. Raymond Terrace Aquatic Club. Thank you, Maddie. There you go. I said Maddie Fowler, keeping me honest here all weekend in the commentary box. So eight minutes left to run in this race, but uh, so getting some great shots from the sports film camera crew and. Uh, as the boat is pulled forward as they're recovering it, if you can see it out there or if you're checking it out on your phones or on screens at home, so the harder they pull the boat forward, the boat rises up in the water column, so it tends to start shedding water and if they do their job right, they'll get the boat to a point where it's buoyant again or nearly buoyant by the time they get to the boat ramp. Crews will be waiting on the ramp with the trailer in the water. It needs to happen quickly, but they'll get it right into the dock as quickly as they can and then hand it over to the standing crews. They'll slide it up and then they'll slowly dewater it. There's every chance that uh, the engine will be perfectly fine on that one, believe it or not, because as the boat inverts, the engine will shut down. They have what's called an inversion switch. Kills the ignition, because the boats aren't supposed to be up down, upside down. With the engine not running, even if it does go underwater, it doesn't matter too much. So spark plugs come out, the fuel is drained. The idea being, get the engine running as quickly as you can to flush all the salt water out of the system. So, hey, great, great job from the crew. 
as the uh, boat number 42 just sails in. You can see a huge crowd down there to lend a hand to get this boat back up onto the trailer. So onto the trailer to go, then they will slowly haul it out of the water, give the boat enough time to shed the hundreds of kilos of water that's taken on board. But the most important thing is obviously Dean himself, he's, uh, he's well, so the medics just giving him the once over and uh, he will then be released. That'll then get our medical crews and our rescue crews back on the water and we can resume what has already been an amazing weekend's racing and hopefully an incident free back half. So eight minutes to run left in this final. Rolling restart, they're always pretty exciting. What it will do is take away all the advantages that those teams had out there. So even if you're half a lap in front, the field will be brought together. Same thing as a safety car in, uh, in motorsport. So it will take away the advantage that you had built up until now. So none of that matters. Yet again, you restart your clock. A lot of crews travelling from right round Australia. As I said, Sam Lucas and the Armourine Jackson's team. They are from Melbourne in Victoria. We've got teams from northern New South Wales, the Sydney Superstars, some of our crews from the Hawkesbury River. Big field, around 350 people involved in this event here this weekend, so it's a pretty big show when you take into consideration uh, everything that has to happen. And we got a big shout out to the crew of Maritime New South Wales, New South Wales Water Police, for issuing the permits and uh, helping us out here. You'll see the Maritime cruisers out there, lights flashing ensuring that this public waterway is, uh, is safe for racing this weekend. <laughs> so great shots down there, just in the middle of the screen there, just above the number board, you will see the airbag. See a lot of safety systems on board, so great to see all those safety systems working. It did take Dino a little while to get out of the boat. One of the things I should mention is to hold an APBA licence, you have to do what's called a cell test if you're going to run in one of these boats. So that's when we deliberately take you to the swimming pool. We have a, a cell that's uh, built to the Australian standards and we strap you into it, we throw you into the swimming pool and turn you upside down. Um, we do that five times, in fact. So the last one, we make you do it with blackout glasses on. The idea is the drivers are very familiar with how to get themselves in and out of their boats. Cell testing is done generally every year. This year, thanks to COVID, we've uh, had a two-year extension on it. But um, yeah, so it's not, it won't be something new. It's very different in a swimming pool, as you can imagine. And it is when you do that at about, uh, probably around 80, 90 miles an hour. So when they went through the mid corner up there. So a bit of a shock to the system when you're going magnificently and all of a sudden you're looking at water through your visor. Saying hello to the local aquatic life here at Lake Macquarie. So back to some of our footage of the early part of this race. And this is uh, this is the run in towards the boat ramp. So this is Brock Cohen with that beautiful start. You can see the boat drifting wide, settles it down, so drops the nose of the boat in and an absolutely spectacular turn of one. That's where he opened that gap on Simon Troy. That first left-hander, he really got the boat in on the pins hard, wasted no energy, dropped it in, turned it, and it was straight onto the gas from the moment uh, he left that corner. So opened that little gap. If you know the faces down there, you'll know in pit lane that uh, that we do up here in the Commentary Rocks, you'll understand that there's probably about eight or nine people in the water around that boat, and uh, they're all from different teams. I can see Paul Sane down there, some of the uh, CBR racing team, so the Cohen Brothers team down there. So what I love about this sport is there's a, a real fraternity amongst the competitors, especially at the pointy end. We've all been there, and uh, no one loves to see it, but... Um, just want to pick up one of the uh, one of the crew down there shirtless. I reckon that's Mr. Paul Sane. Know what he's thinking? To be honest, it's not that warm. Maybe he's had a new spray tan. So anyway, big shout out to Paul Sane. Unfortunately, he got the boat back on the water after a big crash, but uh, found some engine gremlins in his electrical system. So he's put it to bed for this weekend. We're going to take a quick break here in the commentary box, and uh, very very shortly, we're going to come back to you with uh, the remainder of the final. Round number three here at AFPGP Lake Macquarie for the Australian Championship Series.
have got word from the tower that we are back to green flag so this is the final race we had eight minutes to run on this one so the field will form up in a rolling start if you just joined us via the live stream we just saw an incident between Sam Lucas and Dean Allison unfortunately taken both of those boats out of this final 
So this is the commentary box. We're not going to adjudicate, but some very hard and tight racing out there. Unfortunately, ending badly for both those two, which is a real heartbreak story for them. But let's have a look at what's going to go on on the water right now. So Brock Cohen is out there. Simon Troy out there. Sam Lucas is now out. No points in this final. Damon Cohen, Reese Coles, Dean Allison out. Shane Martin in. Riley Wellham is in. Joel Smith out and Mr. Matt Smith is in. So we start out with a massive field this weekend. We've seen a bit of attrition, but let's not focus on that because we have seen some extraordinary powerboat racing now. So this is a rolling restart, ladies and gents. The field will form up on screen right now. Riley Wellham, beg your pardon, or um, Shane Martin in Hunter Valley Fire making his way back around to pick up the field. They will restart in the order they were on the track. Now this is a staggered restart. So out of one, will be inside, out of two will be outside, three inside, four outside. That gap that Brock Cohen had built, it was considerable. It is now vaporized. The field is brought together. The simple reason that we stagger the start left and right is because of the spray. Obviously the, uh, the boat behind, directly behind, will go completely blind, blind the moment that they put the hammers down and the, uh, the rooster tail builds out there. So we will go one inside, two outside, three inside, four outside. That's going to mean the two Cohen boats are line astern. So that's interesting as well. Simon Troy, that, uh, that big gap that Brock Cohen had built through all hard work and a cracking turn through the uh, starting sequence, made the gains there and then was able to extend it. That has vaporised. So they are now all going to be in each other's mirrors. Shane Martin, he's going to be quick. We've seen that in the restart earlier. So that's the boat four back, oh sorry, five back, the all-white Hunter Valley fire machine. The experience of Matt Smith just alongside him will be one to watch. And Riley Wellham is out there taking notes and taking it all in. <laughs> so we're looking to the flags. We've got the white flag flying on the Mercury Rescue 1 out in the middle of the field right now. Great shots there from Sports Film on screen. Now the rules are that you cannot be past the engine of the boat in front of you. So pole two, Simon Troy can bring it right up next to him, but you cannot be in front of the engine. Otherwise you will cop a one lap penalty. So the speed starting to build 4,000 RPM. Bank flags down, watch the rooster tails go. Who gets the best of the drop? Oh, settle it down. Brock Cohen in front. Reese Coles has come up around the outside. He's gone past two boats. And he's now alongside, looking for a race lead. Damon Cohen's trying to stick it to the inside there. They're going three deep through turn number two. Cohen gets it through. Where is Coles? Butler Vehicles, he's on the outside in the spray right now. But it is a Cohen 1-2 with Reese Coles in Butler Vehicles. Just half a boat length to the outside. Holds your breath through turn number five. This one right now. Butler Vehicles, he's halfway in front. That puts pressure on Cohen. No! No! Um, check the lead there. Lady, it was almost an exact duplication of what happened. The race before, we called it early. The pressure was coming. Damon Cohen looking for an inside line. Now, good news in that the boat has landed wheels up. It's on its own steam heading back to the boat ramp. So that is not what we wanted. Damo Cohen, canopy lid pop. So that's the red boat. Out there now, still underway. You can see the cowling has blown off the boat. But he is under his own power, making his way back, but rolling completely over the top of Reese Coles in Butler Vehicles. Now that boat's sitting down on the right sponsor, so I'm expecting he's got damage on the right sponsor. And the reason he's trying to keep the boat moving forward is because uh, he's obviously got a hole in the boat, doesn't want to take on water. So wowee, that is a, uh, mate, it's a huge moment. And unfortunately, it, uh, it was building on the way into that corner. It was always going to be tight. Now, Reese Coles, I don't want to say this is commentary. I don't want to talk about the rules too much. But there was a lane there from where I sat. So Reese Coles, that one boat length in front. What I mean by that is because he was the first boat into the corner, providing he leaves a lane more than one boat wide inside him, he can dictate the radius of the corner. Now that meant that the closing speed of Damon Cohen on his inside, so there was a lane left there, but he unfortunately, it was exactly what we saw with, uh, with uh, the, the incident before, that uh, he was unable to turn as tight 
as Reese Coles turned. And therefore you saw the two boats coming together side by side. As they made contact, the Butler Vehicles boat was turned to the inside and unfortunately that uh, beautiful Baba rolling right over the top of Reese Coles. And uh, mate, that is two more out of action. I tell you what, this is unheard of. We have not seen this in this series. But good news is the uh, the young gun, so Damo Cohen is uh, is back to the boat ramp, standing outside, and I can see Reese Coles standing on the deck of Butler Vehicles, but that's not what we wanted to see. So that is four boats out of action in this final. Now we need to uh, we'll get a couple of officials down there because, uh, but mate, it was these two that came together, or almost came together, and uh, at the last round, so they are tough races, both of these young guys, but. Uh, that's not what you want to see. So Reese Coles, huge amount of experience in the Butler vehicles. Damon Cohen, lightning fast. Just looking at the uh, shots from the boat ramp there right now. But um, obviously one of the things we talk about these boats, to make them go fast, you've got to trim the nose of the boat up in the air. You've got to get it up high and get the boat moving quickly. To make the corner though, to make the boats turn, you've got to drop the nose of the boat back down onto the water. Without the hull in contact with the water, you've got nothing to turn against. And uh, it really looked like Damo just probably, uh, again, this commentary box, I don't want to uh, go on record as saying whose fault it was, but Damo in red hot, and it looked like the boat just didn't turn hard enough, that it, as hard as he was expecting. Reese Coles setting a tight line, and uh, unfortunately that's that's gone wrong. So Reese Coles sitting on top of Butler Vehicles now, coming back to the boat ramp. That's going to put a little bit of a hold on this one, ladies and gents. It's not, not what we wanted. The officials here now working overtime. So unsure what that will mean for Reese Coles. The boat on screen doesn't look damaged in any way, but uh, as a minimum, the uh, the tech inspection crew are going to want to have a look at that boat and potentially will they release him? I don't know. There are penalties for uh, causing what we call a red flag stoppage. So if you are the boat that causes the race to be stopped, you are excluded from the remainder of the heat. That said, however, that means you need to apportion blame to yeah, one of can, the parties yeah. there involved. So was it Reese Coles' problem? Was it Damon Cohen's problem? That's not up to me because I'm here in the commentary box. But uh, unfortunately, what that's going to mean is we take another quick break uh, while we get this show back together. But um, it's not what we want to see. Brock Cohen now. Mate, the field is whittled away. Brock Cohen, Simon Troy, Damo Cohen out. Reese Coles out. Shane Martin, Riley Wellham and Matt Smith. Cohen v. Troy v. Martin v. Wellham v. Smith. Could it be the young Riley Wellham? The youngest competitor out there outlives out last in typical Survivor style and does the Stuart Diver and brings home round three of the championships. Well, for Wiley's sake, I hope so. For everyone else's sake, I hope not. I hope you're enjoying the action here at the uh, beautiful Lake Macquarie. There's been a lot of it. And uh, fingers crossed we can come back and get some racing done and won. And we'll see a checkered flag for round number three of the Australian Championship Series here at Lake Macquarie up in New South Wales.
All right, so just looking at some footage on the screen now, the uh, sports film TV replay. So we're looking at the uh, Butler vehicle, so the black, white and red boat and the uh, boat chasing him, which is Damon Cohen, the Baba. So good gap on the way in. You can see Brock Cohen goes around clean. So Reese Cohen blows off a bit of pace as he comes through the mid corner, makes the corner. You can see Damon Cohen still trying to get the nose of the Baba down there and bang. So that's actually a bigger hit than it looked. That's quite quite a big contact and right on the side of the cell so uh, that will be a really big hit on board for both of those drivers now as you see once the contact was made that contact to, from my point of view in the commentary box that looked almost inevitable so the boat on the outside had an overlap but uh, set the course through the corner of the lane looked as though it was given well it was given there was uh, no contact with the turn board of the inside but Damo Cohen just not able to set the nose of the babber down the boat can turn the kid can drive and uh just a split second delay there to me looks as though it's carried a little bit too much boat speed in and uh, making significant contact with the uh, the side of the cell of Butler vehicle. So that's unfortunate for both of those crews. But uh, obviously all crews reporting in well. So our safety crew is working overtime down there. But we saw both drivers out of the boat. So one more time in real speed. In real speed. Have a look at this. Bang. It's a split second and you can see, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the second boat chasing. There was a window there, and a, like, from this angle, again, this is commentary, it looked like a lane was given, but uh, just not able to settle the nose of the boat down quickly enough to blow off that speed, and uh, just not able to negotiate the turn. Very similar incident to what we saw just one short lap ago, the previous stoppage between Sam Lucas and uh, Dean Allison. But, um, yeah, that's hard work. This boat's just been put back together. There's actually these two involved in the incident last time. Uh, the contact wasn't made, but uh, Damo had to uh, had to take evasive action, which turned the boat over, and quite significant damage there on screen to that uh, starboard sponsor. And you can see the carbon fibre um, hanging out of the side. So the boat taking on a lot of water. So a good choice by, by the young gun to get that boat back to the boat ramp under its own steam. But uh, small consolation for, uh, for this young driver. Builds his own engines. The Cohen Brothers race team. They prepare a boat beautifully, a uh, huge amount of work. Joel Smith looking resplendent there in uh, that beautiful helmet. So looking the goods there, big Joel. And uh, mate, Damo Cohen consoling his mate. So um, yeah, that's not what we want to see, but um, who knows? It's not up to me in the tower, but uh, it's not what you want to see. So Reese Coles has been campaigning for a long time and uh, he is a ruthless operator. Hard and fast and clean. Racing is what we want and just unfortunately not working out. That that corner, they could have done that 25 times more and you would not have seen the same result. Just that split second of delay in uh, the boat settling. So it was super fast in the back chute. You could see the closing speed there as they came through. But uh, unfortunately, um, the jury is out right now. The uh, officials will have to uh, work, that, work that out for themselves. Oh, a big shout out to a good mate of mine who's just sent a message through Gavin Bricker. Unfortunately, not here with us this weekend. Uh, young gun, you and Bricker, um, because the dreaded COVID has uh, has got them got them at home. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, but you and Bricker's been a bit of a revelation. Super fast this uh, this season, but unfortunately, you had a drama with gearboxes. So, been leaving a bit of uh, propeller jewellery all around the lakes and uh, lakes and rivers of Australia. Hopefully, they get that sorted out. We see him back here for round number four. So, a big shout out to Gav. You and, and all the crew of Team Bricker Racing. So a little bit of insult to injury because the rain has just set in here at the beautiful Lake Macquarie. This magnificent saltwater estuary about an hour and a half north of Sydney. And it's been spectacular powerboat racing water. I can tell you it's fast and uh, flat water. But right now there's about a five centimetre layer of fresh rainwater sitting on top of it. Our crew is working overtime out there and... Uh, as the cloud cover comes over, the light is starting to fade a little bit. But two big incidents here in this final race. We started out with, uh, I think it was, started out with 10. Uh, we're now back down to four. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, news from the race officials. I just better go to our local area PA as well. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, news from the race un uh, race officials. Unfortunately, due to deteriorating light conditions and rain and the on-water incidents, the race has been black flagged. 
We unfortunately are run and done, ladies and gents, and uh, that will be the end of the race program here for round number three of the Australian Formula Powerboat Championship Grand Prix Series. Big shout out to all our crowd here that have uh, weathered the storm, and I mean that literally. They've stood here through thick and thin. The umbrellas are up, but uh, that unfortunately will conclude it. Now, I'll just try and get an answer from our... I'll just try and get an answer from our... Just try and get an answer from our OD, Mr. Gavin Simmons, in relation to the finishing positions for that one. Uh, finishing positions will be uh, 98, Brock Cohen, first. Uh, 88, Simon Troy in second. And third will be Shane Martin in uh, vessel number 19. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Big shout out to you, Gav. You've had a crack. You've done a lot of work. You've got a lot of paperwork to fill out. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And please, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the winner of round number three. Not by default. He was in front. He deserved to get it and take the chequered flag. It's boat number 98, the Cohen Brothers Racing Machine, Mr. Brock Cohen. Out of second and a second place and a bag of championship points will be none other than Simon, the Iceman Troy in a boat line number 88. And Shane Martin, the Hunter Valley Fire Machine. Welcome back to the big league, son. And welcome to step number three on the podium for your first hit out. So great result for that crew. Big shout out as well to Riley Wellham and Matt Smith for making their way through to the final series and for still being out there on the water. On screen right now is the Simmons Landscaping Eagle Developments Whitley Boat Sponsored. Boat number 98 of your series number three, sorry, race number three winner, Mr. Brock Cohen. My name's Andrew Murphy and on behalf of the Lake Macquarie Council, the Australian Formula Powerboat Racing Club, the uh, our major sponsors, Simmons Landscaping and Total Energy. We hope you've had a cracking weekend here with us and we look forward to coming back here next year and bringing the show to town. If you're driving home, drive safe. Thank you very much to the crew from Sports Film TV for the unbelievable footage There'll be lots there to go back and troll over. And if you love watching sport, and if you love watching sport anywhere in Australia, get on to Sports Film TV, a subscription service, and they really do an amazing job. Whether it's local football, powerboat racing, motorboat racing, you name it, these guys will go to the opening of an envelope and you will get high definition quality visual and audio from anywhere in Australia. My name's Andrew Murphy. On behalf of the Australian Formula Powerboat Club, all our officials, all our volunteers, it's been great having you on board and we'll see you here at round number four in Moree in a few short weeks' time. Have a great day and see you later.